Lindsay Hunter. I'm an assistant attorney general with the attorney general's office here in Louisiana. My life is hearing officer today. All of the decisions are will be made by the board members. Before we get started, I'd like the board to introduce themselves and then we'll have the attorneys introduce themselves. Can we start over here with Mr. Sims? James Sims, Vice Chairman. Alan Miller, board member. Dolly M. Jacobs, board member. Charles Flake, first board member. Greg Borlaug, board member. Thank you. And uh, the attorneys? I'm Joseph Brandon on behalf of State Auction Services, Ken and Matt Gill. Larry Banks on behalf of the board. Okay. Um, just as a refresher, you all may remember that we started, we had this case set for a hearing last time. We didn't have a form, so we had to continue the case. Um, so here we are again. Are there any questions or motions that need to be taken care of before we begin? Yes. Um, I'd like to sequester all non-party witnesses. Okay. And particularly, I think Mr. Robert Burns is potentially a non-party witness. Okay. I'd like to sequester. Um, anybody else is a non-party witness? Okay. Chairman Ann. Mr. Banks, do you have any opposition to that? No. I'm going to state that I did speak with an attorney about the very possibility of this. I was not subpoenaed. I'm here strictly in a capacity to observe this. So I, I don't think the board has the grounds, neither did he, for this. Um, not a subpoenaed witness, but we asked for an instant subpoena. What's that? An instant subpoena, which means they can, they can call you at any time. What does that mean? is a uh, December 19, 2012 uh, response by Mr. Mack Bueller, uh, a response by Mr. Kim Bueller, and an additional sheet, uh, several pages of auctioneers copy and other responses that were provided to the board in response to this particular matter, along with some copies of what I'd call check registers concerning payments that were made in reference to various items. Go ahead and get I'll keep these up here. If you all want to see these at any point, let me know and we'll pass them down. Otherwise, I'll hand them out as you deliberate. Okay. Uh, are we going to lay a proper foundation, um, Mr. Baxter, with regard to those particular exhibits? Is any particular person going to lay a foundation? Uh, I was not going to go through the necessity of having, um, other than the witnesses that, in exhibit number one, the complainant filed this, so she and was going to... Before anybody testifies, I would like to see a copy of the complaint in response. And, and I'm going to stipulate to them. Oh, okay. I don't have, I don't have I, a problem. We, we, I still need to take sure. it um, yeah, well, in, in connection with this particular matter, um, I think everybody understands the basic uh, issues in this particular matter. Uh, I'd like to call as the first witness. Do you, do you want an open statement or anything? No, I'm way open. Uh, I, was, so I was going to call Mr. Uh, Jim Steele. Mr. Steele, is he here? He's outside. He's in the hall. Can you get Jim Steele, please? Jim. 
You just made a comment about knowing the particular issues to this matter. We don't know anything. About I, I don't know anything. About that. Um, In this particular matter, there's, there's several issues that are raised. Um, uh, the complainant alleges that certain aspects of property were, were sold with, uh, without reserves. Uh, there's also a complaint that she did not receive payment for everything that she uh, submitted. Uh, there is also an allegation uh, in the material that I've been provided to you. A little difficult to read, but uh, that she directed Mr. Bueller to stop sales of items, uh, even though the sales continued, and uh, also that there was issues in reference to uh, the proper reserves. After an investigation, which Mr. Steele might be able to further eliminate the board as to what actions have been taken to review these particular items. I have, I have a question. Jacob, a question. Yes, ma'am. When this was put on consignment for auction, uh, was there a contract wherein it was stated that the property would be sold subject to a reserve price? No, there was not. Thank you. So the exact opposite. Okay. So there's no written contract. There's a written contract signed by the complainant. And nothing it that said says it would be sold to the hospital. To the hospital, nothing about reserve. There, right. there is Thank nothing you. written about a reserve. That's what I mean. Okay. Mr. Um, Brantley, that was kind of an opening statement in reverse order. So if you'd like to make an opening statement, you you just briefly. Um, I, I don't disagree with what Mr. Banks has said in the complaint. We think we'll be able to show beyond any doubt whatsoever there was no reserve the complainant signed a contract that said it would be sold to the highest bidder we'll show the number of auctions that have been conducted by, by uh, state auction services we'll show the number of distributions that have been made we'll show the timeline of when the distributions were made and exactly what was done there was one element of confusion there's no question about that it had to do with an armoire which got credited to one buyer. We'll show and demonstrate when that buyer got credited. And then when we discovered that, we made a distribution to uh, Ms. Fasula. And again, there, there'll be a timeline of chronology supported by 13 documents. Okay. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Can you name me? I'm Judy Fasola. I am the complainant. Okay, well, you'll need uh, to be called as a witness to testify. Well, he's, he, ha he is not, that's not what I complained about. So, Mr. Bankston is stating things that I did not say. So well, okay, I understand. We the board's going to put on their case um, based on their Thank investigation. You. Mr. Steele, would you raise your hand? I have one more question, please, for you. Yes. Oh, Allie Mellon and Mr. Bankston. So the four things that you went over that I kind of jotted down just to kind of give me a, a preview of this more or less was uh, the sale without reserves, the non-payment of some goods, the stop sale didn't happen, and confu confusion on one item. Is that what we're boiling this down to more or less with some other things that make them up that's kind of the basis of the general? Well, the initial complaint, if you read the initial complaint, it doesn't describe about the issue, some of these issues. As a result of some of the investigation, some of these things came about. The initial complaint did not have all these items. As a result of Mr. Steele's investigation, some of these items did come about to be examined. So that's, yes, how that would be it. overall the items that we're talking about. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Steele, could you raise your right hand? Do you swear the testimony you'll give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that help you die? I do. Thank you. Could you give us your name and address? My name is uh, James E. Steele. I go by Jim. I live at 567 Sharp Lane in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And where are you employed? Uh, I'm employed normally by the district attorney's office in Baton Rouge Church. And uh, as part of some of your outside duties, are you involved as an investigator with the auctioneer's licensing board? Yes, I do contract investigations for the auctioneer's licensing board. And in reference to um, that particular job were you called upon to investigate a particular issue? Yes, I was. And could you explain to the, um, the board what your efforts were in reference to what did you receive or what did you understand you were investigating? 
I, uh, I received a complaint from uh, Ms. Masola regarding uh, Mr. Ken Bueller and Mac Bueller's auction, known as the State Auction Services. Apparently, she had consigned a number of items to them, and she felt that the sale was handled improperly. She furnished the board with a signed complaint, which I received uh, an electronic copy of from Ms. Anna Dow, the board's attorney. And what issues were you understanding at that particular time that you were looking at to review? As, as I read the complaint, uh, it appeared that she felt that her items uh, that she had consigned may have been sold for more than she received, and some of the payments that you know, had not been received in a timely fashion, as well as some of her items appeared to have been mishandled and broken. And as a result of, did you actually interview Ms. Pasilla? I did. And were there any other issues that came up as a result of her interview? When I looked into, uh, uh, let me state one more thing, as I looked at the complaint that was furnished to me, it wasn't the most legible in the world, but there were a few things that I found, and, and one of which was it appeared that there were two sets of documents surrounding this auction. One, I believe, was furnished by Mr. Bueller or the State Auction Services, and the other by Ms. Pasola. So the first thing that was unusual that I found was the, um, I would call it a consigner's contract. The, again, I don't have the original documents, so I'm, I'm going off the copies I have, but I did notice that there was a consigner's contract, and I don't know how you want to label this as, a, um, as an, an uh, exhibit, but there's a long list of things with numbers and some scratch-offs signed by Matt Bueller and not signed by where it says seller's signature. It's a, it's a two-page document that I received. Um, then there's a, another document that I received that appears to be, uh, that appears to be just a, an empty consigner's contract with Ms. Pasola's name on it Again, it looks like it may have been signed by Matt Bueller. And I don't, and the origin of these two documents appears to be somewhat different. So that was the first thing that I noticed was just odd or unusual. Okay, the, the items that you've talked about, and let me ask you, are these the two pages that you referred to? Yes, that appears to be the, the two page contract that I think was furnished by a state auction services in response to the board subpoena. And the board issued a subpoena, and those documents were turned over to you by Anna Dow. Yes, that's correct. And that's included in the documents that we looked that, that have been introduced as Exhibit 1, which is the complaint, and Exhibit 2 in Globo, which is the response by State Auction. Right? Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for okay. it. And there's a listing of items here. Uh, that we've looked at, page one, it appears that the document that you received did not have the signature of Ms. Pasula. Is that correct? That's correct. And did you question her about whether she had actually signed this document? And she said she did not. And this is a list, uh, and could you explain to the board as it relates to the, uh, the lot number issues that we're looking at here? Uh, in the in a state auction services response to the board's subpoena, there was a, a narrative um, concerning some of the items, uh, I guess the, uh, let's, let's stick with the Armoire, um, which I think is, is one of the biggest questions, which is one of the things that Ms. Vasilla eventually got paid for, but not in what she considered or what I believe the law considered in a timely fashion. Um, in the response, the state auction services that indicated that when they lose a tag or in some way don't know who the um, consigner is. They strike it off to a 9,000 series uh, lot number. And that was how the confusion occurred with Ms. Pasola's farm lot, in that they ended up paying another consigner under the assumption that it was his sold item. They eventually got what that consigner, so I do not know who that is, retrieved the, the money and eventually paid Ms. Pasola. As I understand the, their response to the, the speech. And is that listed on here on, the, on page two of two, which is referred to as Oak Armoire? Where 
it says, it says on my copy, it just says returned, I believe that's what that says. Yes. So um, I found a, 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 a quite a number of 9,000 series items on this, and what I made an attempt to do was to verify their statement, in effect, to see if, if that was indeed the case, if that, um, by uh, contacting as many of the buyers that they that I had information for that received those items to make sure that they did in fact pay the stated amount for those items. And what was the? Uh, but I may be getting ahead of what you're asking. Right. Now. What was the commission supposed to be on these items? Um, it appears <laughs> as if it was 30 percent commission. And what so, was, what was the time frame in which payment was to be paid made? Again, it appears to me to, it states to be sold, pay within 10 days after sale, I believe is what, the, what that says. And do you know when the item that we're talking about, the home law, that was, there was some confusion on when that was actually paid? <coughs> the actual payment uh, of $455, the check was uh, dated 11-7-2012, check number 1304. What was the date again, please? 11 7 of 2012, check number 1304. And can you tell from the, your investigation of when the uh, actual auction took place? Let's see. Um, let me look through my notes here one second. The Oak Farm Law was sold 9-16-2012, I believe, if, 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 if a handwritten annotation here is correct. Excuse me, it's not Oak. But you can't talk in this proceeding. Well, to be specific, Item number 9009, listed as Armlock, sold to bidder number 41 for $625, according to the records of the auction company, on 9-16-2012. And, and the actual payment to this facility was on what day? Uh, that was November 7th, I believe. It was. Yeah, November 7th, 2012. There were actually two Armlocks that were involved but the one that we talked about that was given the 900, 9,000 series was the one that was uh, some confusion as to the ownership of that particular item, correct? Yes. Now, uh, as a result of your investigation, were you uh, asked to do anything else in connection with um, this matter? Yes. Yes. Jacob's here with a question. I have a question, Mr. Steele, is that correct? Um, do your records reflect when the auctioneer actually received payment for the merchandise? Was it on the date that it was sold, which was 9-16-2012, or was it after that date? And if so, what date? And I don't know when they actually received payment for that item. Okay, so you have no, you, no records that would show that? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. <coughs> what additional items were uh, instructions were you given? Um, there were a number of, uh, of, of bidders, buyers, uh, that received these various items that may have been in question either because they were of similar description, say an armoire, or they were a 9,000 series number consigned by Ms. Vassola. Now, before I, I say I go any further, let me say that all the interviews that I conducted with these bidders were over the phone. I did not actually physically look at these items, nor did I have any photographs or, or depictions or, or descriptions other than what I've been given here. And what was the purpose of you trying to interview the people over the 9,000 series? To make sure that they paid what the auction company alleges that they, they paid for them. Was there some question that you had as a result of interviewing Ms. Fasola about that issue? Right, Ms. Fasola, one of, the, one of her, her questions that she had based on her valuation of her items was that she felt she did not get what they were actually worth. OK. 
objection. That's not responsive to the question. Did you ask the question again? Was, was this as a result of, of your interview with Ms. Fasola? Yes. Okay. And was there, what was the purpose of looking at the 9,000 series items? To either confirm her suspicions or refute her allegations as to whether or not the people who bought the items actually paid what a state auction services said they paid. And was that part originally part of her complaint? I don't believe so. That was as a result of my interview with her. Okay, so the inter so your complaint expanded into areas other than what she initially wrote in her complaint? That's correct. Okay. And uh, were you able to uh, identify those particular items that you were looking for? Yes. Um, and I can go over them individually with you if you want, or I can tell you that globally, uh, the interviews with these people, the bidders, um, indicated that best of their recollection, now understand this is over time, and some of these people go to a lot of auctions, they buy a lot of stuff. So to the best of their recollections, and I have no reason to believe they were other than truthful with me, um, they all recall that they paid about what uh, estate auction services said they paid. Uh, there was one person that I was not able to contact, and there was one person that the description of the item that he bought did not match what Ms. Fasula told me, nor the description of the state auction services. So there was one anomaly in this, if you will, and that was uh, Mr. Richardson, the, the item um, 9060 is described as lamp oil burner. And the hammer price, I believe, was $245. Then there's commission and a few things like that. When I spoke to Ms. Fasola, she described th this item as a gone with the wind lamp. Now, I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's a lamp that you can find in the movie Gone with the Wind or is labeled something like that. But when I spoke to Mr. Richardson, he actually described this item that he purchased as a, um, um, it, it was a coal, a, a, a coal um, excuse me, an oil storage tank, a decorative or antique oil storage tank. Um, and again, it was, it was described completely different than what Ms. Pasola said, and yet, it appears to be the same item based on the records. So, so you looked at a number of items, item 9009A, uh, you looked at items 9011, items 553, 554, 960, um, and in each of those instances, to the best of your understanding from discussions, those amounts appear to be what was listed as what was the actual sales price, is that correct? That's correct. The only other <coughs> anomaly worth mentioning that I could think of is number item number 554, which is an armoire that Ms. Taya said she paid $105 for. She, she actually did recall the purchase, but her description of the armoire is that it is small, it's in need of repair, one door doesn't work, and that actually doesn't jive with the description that Ms. Casola gave me either. So I, I can't account for this exactly, other than perhaps people have different ways of describing things. Uh, did you have a chance or an opportunity to interv interview either of Mr. Mr. Bueller? No, I did not speak to either one of them. I had what, what I thought was enough information based on their response to the complaint. And did you make a report concerning the items that you recently did uh, an interview with the purchasers? Yes, I did. In connection with the uh, witness's testimony, I'd like to offer and file and introduce as exhibit number three uh, a report uh, from Mr. Steele that was provided on those particular items. Uh, Mr. 
Mr. Steele, um, maybe I don't know whether you, some of the board members you've testified for any, before any of the board members before, have you, have you done an investigations for the board? Oh, yes, I have. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of the board? Yes, it's, it's kind of like any cop would be familiar with the criminal law. And as a result of your investigations, uh, did you find that there was any violations that you saw in reference to uh, either uh, the state auction services or Mr. Kimby? It, it appears to me uh, that the judge is calling for a conclusion that only this board is allowed to make its conclusion law. As a result, did you find any particular areas in which you had concerns with? Uh, the first Same objection, he's just trying to come in the back door, we can't come in the front door. <laughs> what areas of the rules were you particularly looking at as it relates to you? Uh, the first area that I was looking at was the timely payment uh, of, of funds by the auction company or the auctioneer to the consignment. Uh, in one particular instance, that of the arm law, uh, there does not appear to be to meet the statutory requirement. Objection. Okay, in reference. Objection. Objection is there is no, no statutory requirement as to the time payment. Time payment is written in the contract by the parties. There's no statutory requirement for time payment. Okay. He's talking about there's a statutory requirement. It's not a statutory requirement. Well, let me rephrase that. It does not appear, <laughs> it does not appear to meet that he got stated you know. on the contract. The contract said it would be 10 days after the second. After the second. Okay. Now, as part of the uh, original complaint in reference to um, both the state auctions and Mr. Kim Mueller, there were two different areas in which was under investigation. Efforts to deceive and defraud the public, as well as incompetency or gross negligence. Is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> and did you have an opportunity to review the documents that were provided by Mr. Buehler, the both Mr. Buehler's? Yes. And what was your understanding of the response as it relates to this misapplication of activities in reference to all law and, and the oil land? It, it, from my understanding of it, as I stated before, when the, their response indicates that when they lose a, a tag or in some way cannot identify a consignment, they strike it off to a 9,000 series number and then make an attempt to find out who that consignment is later. In the case of the armoire, they admitted their mistake in, in that they, they paid the wrong guy, essentially, is what it is. In the case of the oil of the lamp or the uh, storage tank or whatever that may be, perhaps that is something they need to look further into and find that out. But it appears to be some type of mistake in there also. Now, is there any, are there any restrictions on Mr. Ken Buehler that you are aware of as it relates to his activities as an auctioneer? I, I, there's a number of them. The only one that I'm, um, I guess, that I can state before the board under oath that I know for sure is that he's not allowed to handle contracts or negotiate contracts. And there was actually a agreement regarding his reinstatement as a license. Were you involved with any of that uh, investigation previously? I, I was, um, but I, I must tell you that that was quite some time ago, so without a, an actual, you know, if you were to show me the document, I could tell you what those are, but I don't recall them off the top of my head. Uh, in connection with the witness's testimony, I'd like to offer the following use exhibit number three. Oh, that would be okay. <clears throat> um, Were there any other activities that you were instructed to do by uh, uh, Ms. Dow under, under the initial investigation? So, uh, I contacted Mr. Soler. I obtained a statement from her to kind of flesh out what the uh, complaint was. I contacted the uh, designers and the, uh, the bidders. Um, I don't recall any other specific things that was asked me to do. 
So the major issue that you saw was this issue of failure to pay in a timely manner, correct? Failure to pay in a timely manner and the, the record keeping, the, the mishandling of the record keeping and the fact that there are uh, what appear to be contracts signed by one party and not the other. And when, when you're given a document, are you given a document such as this? Do you call that? I believe so. Yes, it, it, it appears to be a, a blank consignment controller or consignment contract or something along those lines. Whereas you have another contract that is this one that is written, as you can see, it has a number of items on there, you know, listed page one of two and page two of two. As signed by Mac Mueller, not signed by anybody else. And it appears to be uh, Ms. Basola's signed item. Is your, is your understanding that the uh, seller is required to sign a document for the actual consignment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm not an attorney, but my understanding of the contract is that both parties have to sign. And these listing of items that are listed here on uh, this document of page one of two, uh, did, did it appear that these numbers, the 9,000 series was added at a different time? It certainly appears, you know, the original document, I cannot state for sure, but it does appear that the oil lamp, the last item on there might have been added. Um, of course, obviously, there's a number of strikeouts and, and things of that nature. Um, and it, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm looking at a copy of what appears to be a, a carbon type copy. And you can see that some of the writing is darker than others, and the 9,000 numbers and the return numbers, uh, the return item, kind of stand out as looking different. And that's all that I can state, that they look different. So um, as a result of your initial interview uh, with the complainant, there was some concern about items being sold for a price different than what was, in which she was paid for, correct? That's correct. But after your review of those items, you, you, you were unable to confirm any of that with any of the bidders. I found no evidence of that. That's all the questions I have. I tell you. <clears throat> um, Attorney Benson, are you ready for questions from us now, or would you rather? Let's let Mr. Uh, Brantley go, and then we'll redirect, and then more questions from the board. Mr. Stewart, you would agree with me, would you not, that you uh, did not have occasion to interview Matt Peel or Ken Peel or individual? No, I did not. Are you aware that a state auction services is actually owned by Mr. McNeil, but not by Mr. Ken, Mr. Ken Brewer? Yes. And that Mr. McNeil handles all the money for the service, correct? Mr. Ratner, if you say that, I'll believe you. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> Don't put that on the record. Uh, so you did not have occasion to actually go to that location and look at any of the original documents? No, I did not. I don't have any further questions. Okay, in the meantime, I'll finish my coffee. Jacob says a question. <laughs> <laughs> Investigator Steele, I understand that the documents, the document, the, the merchandise was sold on 9 16 12, but when did they actually receive payment? Was it that day? Was it a week later? Was it two weeks later? And without looking at their, I guess, their statements, um, I can't state for certain when they was paid. I know that typically auctioneers require payment before the item leaves the the shop, the store, the, the barn. However, but, but that could be a week or two weeks later. It could be. Uh, and did the contract state that the money would be remitted to the seller when payment was within ten days after payment was received? It said after the sale, yes, ma'am. After the sale, what do you mean by sale? What is your interpretation of sale? Does that mean that they actually have to, that the money actually has to clear? My interpretation of, of the sale, and this is strictly mine, is when the hammer falls, the sale has occurred. 
And nowhere in the contract is that specified. Is that correct? No, ma'am, not that I can find. Um, did you talk to the seller, um, Ms. Basolo, to see what her understanding was? I don't think I asked specifically that, that question. I believe her understanding is that she would be paid within 10 days after the auction. I believe that was her understanding, but she can speak for, for herself when she takes it. Well, actually, the title under the law doesn't pass until uh, remuneration is received on Louisiana cases. Not when the gavel comes down, it may have been sold to a particular person, but the title of the merchandise doesn't pass until remuneration is received. There are about 50 cases on that. And that, um, that, that certainly does make sense. Okay. There's, uh, I understand um, that Ms. Pasolo did not sign the consignment document, and that was your test of contract. Is that correct? She signed a document. I believe she has a document that she signed. But did she actually sign the consignment contract not that you one, reviewed? Not any of the ones that I reviewed. So it only had the auctioneer's signature on it. Is that correct? Mac Mueller's. And did you find out why um, it was devoid of the uh, the um, seller signature? Uh, from my interview with Ms. Pasola, and perhaps she would be better to, to ask this question, but from my interview, she signed a document in a, I guess, a, in a kind of trust, you know, um, that, assuming that. I'm going to ask her some questions. It's, it's been important for me to make this decision. Yeah, yeah she, she signed a document. Okay. Uh, that, that, but that, not the document. Okay, that not I the saw. document. Did she review the consignment document, even though she didn't set the sign before it was actually given to the auctioneer? Did she review it and I'm, consent to it? I'm sure she reviewed what she signed. But I'm talking about the consignment document. But as, far as, I know, as far as I know, when I, when I showed her my copies of this, she said she had never seen that. She had never seen that before. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Sands, you have a question? Yes, and this question is from Sam's two relatives, Steve. Regarding the two items in question, the Omar, which is supposed to be sold too cheap, is, do you know anything about the Omar, how old the Omar was, when they had an appraisal with it, or? I, uh, about the only thing that I know about the armoire, ha having never actually seen it, is Ms. Pasola's description of it, and it was supposedly, uh, you know, an antique and in excellent condition. And um, yeah, well, I, you know, it, I, she described it as something that was good. Let's put it to you that way. All right, you described a gone with wind oil lamp. Are we talking about a? Primitive lamp? Are we talking about a reproduction? Or do you know? I, I don't know. That'd be a question that you probably need to put to Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Well, one more question, if, if I may. Um, Jacob's here for the record. The particular consignment contract did not state that any of these documents or, or items would be served, sold with a reserve. There's no reserve placed on any of these documents according to the consignment contract. No, I could not including find Including the armoire, including the lamp, no reserve. I did not find anything anywhere that had a statement of reserve. And did you ask Ms. Pasolo whether or not she signed any document where she actually placed a reserve on any of these documents? And if so, what was the reserve? As far as I know, she did not sign any document that had anything to do with a, a reserve. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, are there any follow-up, any more questions? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Do you all have any objection to Mr. Steele, Steele leaving? Or you no, thank you, Mr. Steele. We hope we avoid We release him. Thank you. Did you say the last name for me? S-T-E-E-L-E. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. 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 Yeah. No, man. No, we receive a not. Well, you will when you be able to be called. Uh, it's nothing to do with this. Well, no. It's about my time. I, I take care of my elderly mother. She's we can take around the turn if we need and to. And I wondered if I could. I have no objection. Fire store with any 
Pardon me? What time do you need to leave? Well, I, if we've been, no, what, an hour or so now? What, 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 the, what time do you need I, to leave? By about 3 o'clock at least. It's quarter to 2. Uh, I mean, we can take her now. I just, take her now. Okay. It doesn't matter, but I just need to let you know that I'm on kind of a okay. Miss, you want to tell her to wait? Let her go ahead first. Okay. Come okay. on. No, no. But this I just wanted to let her know. Involved. No, we'd like to go ahead and do you. That's up to the attorney. Well, we, we can take you out of well, town. I don't know if you're doing that. I would love to hear Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, it's not your decision. It's up to them. Come on. Come on. I really wanted to this down. Oh, okay. 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 Could you give us your name and address? Uh, Judy Casola, 9555 South River Oaks. That means Southern Way And let me ask you if you can identify which has been marked as exhibit number one. Do you recall that document? Um, yes, and I, I do. And this was a complaint filed by you, is that correct? Exactly. And the, the auctioneer's complaint that you filed was against Mr. Ken Hewitt, correct? Yes. And the name of the company was a state auction service. Yes. Could you describe to the um, to the auctioneer board uh, what your complaint was about? Um, can I first say something? No, you, you, you need to respond. To Respond to questions, and then when we finish, okay. I'll let you make whatever kind of statement. If you don't mind, I'll just read the complaint. How about that? That'd be fine. Okay. okay. Uh, I sold my furniture. I'm sorry. He sold my furniture, he says, at one price. And I told him I can't let my things go at such a cheap cost to send my things back. He kept putting me off, and when he did, finally bring he didn't have all I told him, especially the primitive and the library table and the birthing chair two months ago. He, after two months, says, oh, I sold it. He was loud, scary at the time, and I asked him to not let my neighbors hear him. He said he hoped he never saw my face again. His child and worker said, I could have reserved, put on my furniture. He said, I got on him tell, telling his children and the man, I got, got on to them for telling you that. Uh, and the man is a shyster. This is my person. That's usually reserved for lawyers, by the way. I, okay. Calling, <laughs> calling to I make... I'm one. I, I know, calling to make sure he couldn't sell anything else, but he still sold them. His father knows also. Uh, and they broke the bond with the wind lamp. The library table fell apart. Uh, when they delivered it apart, and it was in great shape when he took it. I gave Ken the chance to improve his reputation, but he still is the same old Ken. I never raised my voice to him, but had to endure this yelling and disrespect. I am hurt and disgusted. And um, if you look, now some of that's not exactly what's written here. You kind of improvised on some of it, correct? Well, I'm, I'm reading my writing here. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, again, uh, you were supposed to call me back. You called me Tuesday on the 19th of March, Mr. Baxter. Okay, so we didn't any questions. Did. So, Ms. Mazzola, sure. this is not time to talk. You just have to answer the questions. Okay, but... Let me ask you, on the third page of your document, it says attempts to resolve the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, 
can you can you read that to us? Calling to make sure he wouldn't sell anything else, but he still sold them. His father knew also. Broke gone with the wind lamp. Okay. Now there appears to be a agreement that you signed with him uh, initially. Do you recall the date in which you initially signed this the agreement? This probably around the 10th of August, something like that. And it, uh, actually, uh, may I speak? Just answer the question. Just answer my question. Uh, it was around that early part of August. Early part of August. Mm -hmm. And then... But he didn't give me the... the he wasn't there when I got this. If you just, we'll work through all the questions. Okay. If you just answer the questions, and we'll get through but it. Was it Ken? You said when Ken. It wasn't was it Ken? Ken. So who did you speak to? Uh, his nephew, his son, and his helper. So, sometime in August of 2000 and That's when I got this. Let me finish the question. Are you asking let, let me finish about the, this? Let me finish the question. <coughs> answer, okay? Sometime in August of 2012 is when you entered into your first year agreement with Mr. with the estate auction, correct? Or not? Can I talk? <laughs> well, when I called Mr. Bueller, he came to my house. He did not have a contract or anything with him. I showed him my things. He came back one time, and then the next time, his helper, uh, his nephew and his son, and they brought me this, which is absolutely empty, nothing on it whatsoever. Okay, the question was, was this in August? This was in August, okay. yes. All right, so they've been to your house several. I'm sorry, yes. Just in reference to Mr. Bueller, would you say Matt Bueller or Ken Bueller, yes. please? Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, this particular document, let me see the, this is the, this is the, what you were given when? In August when they came to your house? About, uh, the, yeah, right after Ken came to the house about a week after, uh, a few days after that to pick up the stuff. Okay, now in this particular document that you have here, it, it was signed by you, correct? I said, what am I doing? There's nothing on it. And he said, stop. well, you have to sign it. I said, okay. <laughs> I'm going to let you. Yeah, that's and, me. That's and, me. What you have to do is you have to answer the question, and if you think there's some explanation, okay. so the answer to this is yes, I signed this. Yes, I did. And was my, who was the person? Was it signed when I, you received it from Mr. Back Bueller or, or Ken Bueller, or, or do you recall? What does it say in the bottom there? It says Back Bueller, but it was given to me by the nephew. Was, was his signature on it when no, I signed it? I didn't. So when the item, when the items were picked up from your house, was there were you given a list of items that were picked up from your house? <laughs> so this was signed in blank with no indication of. of and I reluctantly did it. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, y'all taking all my furniture? Can I have it please? Because I, because these are NCR paper, it's hard to read, see, but you yeah. have a, a, good, a pretty good copy. I've already marked one exhibit as exhibit number four, which I haven't introduced, which I was going to use for this doubt. I'm going to mark this consignment of control, uh, which uh, is undated, and mark it as exhibit number five and ask that it be published to the uh, uh, commission. Can I keep that? Well, let me give it to so, the Because it has the 10 day, uh, we can get a copy. For the record, but let the board's going to need to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any objections to that, Mr. Uh, Randall? No objection. Okay. So, they come and pick up your items. Did you ask either Mr. Buell to <coughs> reserve on any particular item? As I stated in my uh, complaint, that his own son said, Ms. Judy, why don't you go ahead and put the reserve on it? I said, I can do think I can do that. And he said, oh, yes, ma'am. I got in the back, I called him, no answer. I eventually got in touch with him, and I said, Kim, I said, you know, I'd like to, to, I can't let my things go like this. I need to put a reserve on it. 
He said, yeah, I got all over their ass for telling you that. Um, I can't do reserves. I, I couldn't make any money if I, if I did reserves. And this is your And speaking? I said, well, you need to put my things back. So when, when did this take place? This takes like, uh, I probably in September the first. Do you know when the auction took place on, on any of the items? I am assuming it was not the end of the 16th. Of what? Of August. So, and so after being asked the question, so there were items that were sold by Mr. Bueller or a state auction that was done before you spoke to him about putting a reserve on or after? There were items, except my armor, that was a question, that was sold. When I got my check from that sale, the armor was not on it. Were they sold before you had the conversation you just referenced about the reserve? Uh, yes, it was It was after, when I saw what they were going for at that watch I don't know, we got to do this. Okay, so you got so, I, I thought he was going to money for Okay, so at this point, there were items that you received information about how much they had gone for. Mm -hmm. You were unhappy with that amount? Yes. Okay, and then as a result of that, you spoke to Mr. Bueller? Mr. Bueller came to my house. Kim Bueller. Yeah, Kim Bueller came to my house. Finally, not 10 days, there was uh, another check. It was, it was like a month or so after I kept calling to get it. It stayed at 9.24, the check, of Twitter, yes. But that. And uh, along with it was this uh, list of things to equal the check amount of, of what was sold. Uh, then I get the same paper dated the same day, and I get it in November, and it's the same identical, same identical things, except someone has put in the armoire in question. You know, it, it's just amazing. So what was the, what was the question? I've, I've forgotten the question. The question is, I want to understand when you communicated with <laughs> Mr. Bueller, Kim Bueller, or Matt Bueller, that I've seen what's sold. I'm unhappy with that amount. Man, you have to let me finish the question. You're unhappy with the amount, and as a result of that, I've called him and said, stop. Would you do that? 924, I'm going to And in reference to that, 924, did you ask that the items that you had consigned to, um, to him be returned? A long time before that. Before 924 12? Yes, oh yes. When he brought me the check, we had talked and I said, I just can't, you know, I just can't. And so right then I said, bring me. He said, Do you want me to bring your stuff back? I said, You're going to have to. And I can't. I just can't, can't afford to, to let my things go. Okay, Mr. Back. Excuse me, because it's a little bit confusing. This is Jacobs here. Did she have that conversation with him before or after the items were sold? Because I understand the whole auction, the entire auction, took place on 916. So at any time before 916, did she tell him, no, um, I don't want to sell it for that price? He would not let me put, he would not uh, sit down with me and say, okay, what would you like for this or that? And so the auction had already taken place, though. Huh? Yeah, I was like, so the auction you told him, you told him about your dissatisfaction after the auction had taken right. place. When he came That's to my home, know. when he came to my home, I thought there would be a time when we would sit down, go over my things. I have a total of 20, 26 items, uh, and there were only. like 10 or 11 items that were sold at that auction. So, so there was a lack of communication between you and him? I, I couldn't, no, I couldn't. 
question? It does. Okay. So, yeah, you know, the other 16, were they sold or ever returned to you? Uh, I kept trying to get them back. And it so was they were like sold? In December. No, it was like in December when I finally got them back. And they did get 16 items back. Just answer the question. Don't. Okay. So you got 16 items back? Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, approximately. Okay. I don't know. Sure. I haven't counted it. Right. I know you want to try to explain, but we need to try to get it in the order of answering the questions and if you want to give some further explanation, sure. okay? Sure. So, when you communicated with uh, Mr. Ken Buehler, the auction, when you ultimately got paid, the auction was already over, correct? The first auction, yes. Was there a second auction? I, I have no idea. Were there additional items other than on this consignment sheet? There were other items, but once I got this and saw what they were going for, I said, we need to bring my things back. Now you indicated. And the arm lock is not on there. He said, yeah, it's there. It's at the office. It's there. His son told me. Can you answer the question? Ms. Fasuli, you indicated that you received an additional chewing up document that, that the arm was listed on one but not on the other. Could you like to see that? Sure. Now, this document, which I'm going to mark as exhibit number six, and ask whether you can identify this particular, it's dated 9-16-2012, is that correct? That's right. Now, this lists a number of items, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and which I'm going to mark as exhibit number seven, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine items. Uh, <coughs> you received this document, exhibit number six first, is that correct? Yes, I had the check when he came to my house, finally, on when it's at the end of September. Okay. And then, Does it have a date? Can you give us a date? The date, the date of the check? 9 12, 24 is when he brought it to me. Uh, 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 this is what it's dated. <coughs> it was around that time. Was like, is there a date on that invoice? The invoice is dated 9 16 of 12. Is that, that. is that correct? I didn't get, I didn't get, this, this check is dated 924. And I'm going to mark this as exhibit number eight. Mr. Banks, could I have one question, Mr. Banks? Yes, Yes. All right. So, just to get this straight in my head, the auction was 916. The check was dispersed on 924. When was the sale of the armoire? Was it on 920, was it on 916, or was the armoire at a later date? Is that in the record anywhere? Do you have that information? Can I speak? Let, let me, let, let's let the attorneys answer that if they can. If the auction was on 916. The armoire was, this is the issue with the armoire being confused. It was listed in a, as the 900 series. 9,000. 9,000, I'm sorry. 9,009 and was initially paid to the wrong. But it was on the, the armoire was sold on the 916. 16th also. Yes. That's correct. That's Thank correct. you. Okay. So we got. And she never received money for the armoire until October? So the 924 check didn't include the armoire price. Okay, well when did she receive money for the armoire? November 7th. November 7th? All right. Can I? All right. So we have, you received this, number six. And I received. Then you received this, Alter. number seven. Alter. Yes. Where the, there's additional items, more than just, seven. more than just seven items on there. Correct? Are there more items on the second? Yeah, the, the, the armor is on the, the one that okay. I received in uh, November. Okay. And you received this number, exhibit number it's seven. Not, it's right in the middle there. Well, it's not on the, on the original that I have. I understand. The question is, when did you receive this? Sometime in November? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then this check that we have number Exhibit A, which is dated 9-24-12, you think you received that check approximately on that date? Yes. And here's the, um, the 400. I haven't even cashed these checks. Um, yeah. There's a reason.
reason why you haven't cashed the checks? That's, uh, that's, he sold uh, an antique sled for $10. I got $10 for this. He sold okay, you don't have to explain it for the that's, record. I was just asking. That's that other things that I've, you know, discussed with that. Okay. And here's the check for $455 dated 11 7 for the pawn lot that was, he says, we sold 9 Hmm. For $455. When, did you, when were you given that check? November. On that particular day? November, November 7th. So when, so yes, it was November 7th. Now, you had some additional issues separate from the reserves and separate from the uh, the on walk issue, is that correct? Yeah. You had some additional issues that you raised in your complaint where you initially thought that some of the items did not <coughs> go for the amount that you got paid for, is that correct? I, I had a person sit down conversation on this actually we have been talking Mr. Steele and I said honestly I just don't think he's so my things like that but that's my personal opinion I can't prove anything I really told him I cannot let my things go at that price and then did we'll you talk. complain about something other than <coughs> we've already no, talked about no, in your complaint I just read my complaint okay so now, the answer to the question is no, no or is it yes Mr. Steele is the one that said Having a private conversation between the people. Excuse me, uh, Madam Chairman. I mean, I, I think we ought to stick to what the complaint, this particular exactly. complaint. That's the only thing exactly. that's before the board, not something that may exactly. have been discussed. Here's so I'm going to ask that any extraneous information regarding what someone may have thought or what took place outside the complaint oh. not come into this. Well, if there's an investigation and it leads to additional charges, the board can bring those charges and they've chosen to do so in this case. They, they shouldn't be discussed at this meeting because it's not part of the complaint for this particular meeting. I don't think she's discussing anything well, outside, uh, may, outside of her complaint, yes, but not outside of the complaint. I, th letter. I think she answered it, that that's the, the complaint. She read the complaint. That is what we're adjudicating here. Uh, I just made a comment to him. I said, he wanted this one at my door here. It's a huge armoire. And, he, and I said, you see this armoire? This is what he sold for $100, about a foot and shorter. Looks just like it. He sold for $105 and sent me $73. I said, I just cannot believe that. If he did, I'm very, I cannot let my things go. And I just could not believe it. So that was a personal conversation. I said, no one can say anything other than what I wrote in this complaint. What no, I think, think you've answered the question, so let's continue with the question. And I also have pictures. Okay, we're going to continue with the question. Yes, sir. This is it. We want the picture. I want to see the picture. We want the picture. Well, the attorneys need to see them first. Sure. I mean, these were um, no, they're not very good because I did not take these pictures. Um, for the Attorney Benson, you're not tendering the witness yet, are you, sir? No. Yes. Okay, yes, sir. I did not take these pictures for yes, this because I never thought I'd need, you know, to take pictures. And the online question is in the back. You can't probably see it. Let me, let me ask you. This is exhibit number two, which there are several pages on here. Were, were you shown these documents from? No, I never saw this. Let me ask you to look at these documents. It's a page one and page two of a consignment, which appears to be the same form uh, that you earlier looked at with items listed. Did you ever sign a document similar that's, to this? Ma'am, the question is, did you yeah. ever? Then that's all you have to know. Okay. Uh, so this discussion here about the listing of the various items you never received a copy of this from either, Mr. Bueller? Yeah. 
what, what do these pictures represent? Um, it kind of shows the, the, the ones that he sold at the auction um, at Onyx or Marble, whatever. He said it's Onyx, it's Marble. Uh, a tall buffet with the on top, marble top. Uh, he sold a Murphy bed that was very gorgeous, perfect condition. Uh, it's all, all the way to the right there. And it's just, these are pictures that I had just taken, you know, not for this. I just had them down in storage. But uh, uh, the library, t I mean, the uh, library table, I did get back. It was in pieces, but Mr. Mr. Matt came and uh, picked it up and fixed it uh, after I called and complained. Uh, and the table, the form table there, it's, uh, it's about, gosh, 10 feet long, I want to say. Uh, he sold it for $400, and I got $200 for a Cypress wedding table that came from St. Francisville. Well worth more than that. Along with my primitive that was not oak, it was Cypress. It's almost 8 feet tall, 4 feet wide. Uh, it was not an antique. I've had it for about... 18 years. It was uh, made by, uh, I guess, someone in Louisiana, you know, primitive armoire made out of cypress that he sold for $600 and sent me $455. Well worth close to $3,000 for some Let me ask you to look at two additional documents. This is an exhibit number two, a Globo. This document and the specific and the, and the following document ask if you to examine that. Sorry. Oh, this is when you brought uh, my things back. And there's a, look at the next page. Dad repaired the library. Table. So there are two. <coughs> you can read those two uh, items to us if you will. Uh, what? Yes. It says received from estate auction services all unsold, unsold items on 11 5 12. So, except chair. Okay, so there was one chair. Everything got returned to you on November. Third, five, November five. And he said, if I didn't sign this, he wasn't going to unload anything. I said, I want to see what's in it before I sign anything. Then the next page. Okay. Repaired library table, received on 12, 18, 12 from the state auction services. Would that be the last item that you got back would be the date? This was brought back along on five and it was in peace when I, the it back. was like falling apart. So Mr. I called Mr. Mack and he came to my house uh, and he was he then got it about, about a week later I called him. Mm -hmm. you know, so that was repaired in return. So by December the eighteenth everything had been returned to you that had not been sold. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, except the armoire, which was, I was told, was not sold by Mr. Matt, Ken, his son, Jesse, I think that's the black guy's name, with real street of people that have worked for him for years, and also um, Betty, I think I talked with her, Mr. Jules, uh, I think that's her name, uh, what? And I kept calling him, I need it for Thanksgiving. I'd like to put my armoire in before the holidays. And I kept calling him, calling him, calling him. Let me ask you, um, do you need these, we'll yes, get these photographs back to you, but can we mark them and introduce them? Okay. Uh, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, can eight. Can I explain the, eight, the pictures? They're probably not. Okay, you know. Eight photographs, I'll mark them. A, B, we don't have any 
the, the, uh, the mm -hmm. okay. So if you feel that you need to explain. Well, if, if, you know, the, the, if you've understood the pictures or not, but do I'll you have any questions, questions about the pictures? No. Uh, I have one more thing. Was the uh, uh, chestnut armoire in the corner here is in pieces. Uh, I called another auction company because I've got to get my things sold, and they do do reserves. Okay, can you, you look? can't just testify to any of the questions about the pictures. They don't have any questions okay. about the pictures. But so I was telling you the pieces are missing. We can't out. testify right now. Okay. Thank you. What we'll do um, is, is we'll make copies, okay. and then we'll give you the originals back, okay. if that's okay. I'd like to, any objection? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions I have. Okay. Mr. Um, Brantley? You indicated just a second ago that you've called another auction house because you have to get yourself sold. Which auction house is that? Um, randomly chose uh, an acorn, a tummy acorn. Is there a language that tells you, explains that it will be your property will be sold to the highest bidder? interested in investigating complaints. Um, however, let me point out to you that when an auctioneer sells movable merchandise, they do it based upon the current market, what the current market will bear. And um, not what the item is worth, unless of course you get an appraisal and there's a reserve placed on the piece that you want to sell. So keeping that in mind, I have some questions for you. Um, was there any document that you signed that put a reserve on any of the merchandise that was supposed to be sold by the auctioneer? That's, that's when I called and said, stop. <laughs> I'm talking about when you initially gave it to him, with that document that I you didn't waiting, sign when I it was, was listed. Yeah, I was waiting for him to come over, sit down, let's go over and see what we're going to, you know, I never saw him again. So, it, so is it correct, though, that when you actually gave him the portfolio of the merchandise that was going to be sold, which, by the way, is his signature but not your signature, there was no reserve placed on any item? Is that correct? Because I didn't see it on the document. Well, I've never, I don't know anything about auctions. I have no idea. So, so your answer would be no to that question? Okay. All right. And even I though... I was assuming he was coming back to Okay, so you thought he would come back. Yeah. Okay. Um, did he tell you um, when you, you gave him all this merchandise, did you all discuss the date when the sale was going to go through? Did he tell you it was going to be on 916? I told him I only wanted it to go when he had better things, and that's when I was waiting for him to come back and sit down and go, like, I, I need to get this for this, I need to get this. I never saw him again. Um, and, okay. But I had, he has smaller auctions, he told me, on Fridays, and I said, I don't want my things in the you know, I wanted in the better auctions. I understand. I don't understand what he was talking about, but so I... So the question was, yeah. did you know that it was going to, this, your property was going to be auctioned on 916? On yes or no? I don't remember if I knew that, that it was that day, right. you know, but I'm, okay. I'm, I'm probably, probably, you know, uh, At, around that time. Okay, and even though you didn't sign the consignment of contract, did you review it? When it was written, did you look at it to make sure that all of your merchandise was on that consignment contract? It was empty. That's my contract right there. So you never did review it? I never saw the, uh, that contract. Well, were you given a copy of it by the auctioneer? Never. 
Okay. Yeah. His and nephew mm -hmm. gave me that on the way out yes. and said, you got to sign here so they'll know that we could, that, you know, I said, but it's empty. Oh, well, yeah, that's all right. You just sign. And I'm like, okay. I mean, Wyatt, his son was there. Uh, I had a witness, you know, so I said, okay, I'll sign it, but there's nothing on it. <laughs> uh, were, were you present at the auction when the auction took place? For about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And when I went there... That's all. You answered the question. And so you were present when the auction took place? Just briefly. Um, now, the auction took place according to the information we have on 9-16-2012. And um, you received money according to your testimony on 9-24 for everything but the long one. Is that correct? Yes. So no, you not actually, everything, no ma'am. Uh, only a few items okay. that were sold. So actually, of the items that were sold, you received your money, according to your testimony, within eight days after the auction. Is that, is that correct? From 916 to, to uh, 10, uh -huh. I mean from 816. Well, it was 916 was the auction, and I believe you testified that on 924 you that's received. What, that's what we check. Now, that's um, the wait, wait, that's when the check was dated. I don't know. I think it was probably after that, but that's okay. Well, that's did you try to cash it on 920 on 924 and somebody tell you oh, the funds are not available? No. <coughs> All right. So you kept the check. In fact, you still haven't cashed any of these checks. No, no. That that first check when I saw what I was getting for things, I said I have we have to stop. Okay. So you never cashed. And on that, yes, you know. Yes, I cashed the first check. Yes. Did you cash it right after you got it, if you got it on 9-24? I didn't, I, what I'm saying is I don't know if I got it on 9-24, it was dated 9 -24. Did you cash it two days after you got it? Immediately I went to the bank. All right. So. Okay, but I'm okay. saying the arm lot was not on that. I, I understand. We understand. We understand. Now, um, did, did you call to see why um, your check on the arm lot was delayed? Did you ever place a telephone call to the auction here? Why should I? It wasn't on the list. So no. So the answer to that is no. no. And um, is it correct that you 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 didn't deal with Ken Bueller, you dealt with um, Matt Bueller? I've never met Matt before in my life. So you did, okay, so you never met, met Matt, so you, de you dealt with Ken. Right. And only with Ken? Right. That's all the questions I have. Any other board? Yes, sir. Pazola. I'm James Sims, board member. At any time prior to your consignment to the state auction services, did you ever have an appraisal done on any of these items that you wanted to sell by a qualified appraisal? No, I did not. Yes, sir. Uh, Greg Ward on board members, Ms. Pazola. Did uh, I saw in your statement that you put the same old Ken dealer you were given a chance to, had you dealt with him before? Um, I don't know Ken. Yeah. He was married to, well, he's married to a lady whose brother married my cousin, okay? And I went to school with her. But we're no, I, I don't see his wife, we don't associate, but his ex, but that's the only way I knew Ken. And she had told me what all happened. And so, Wyatt, I just love to death. They're his child. And um, that's how I knew was to, Ken was through Wyatt and, and his wife, briefly, you know, not, not in a long term uh, relationship. But Wyatt, when I saw that Wyatt was living uh, with uh, the viewers, and. Yeah, I'm going to object to that. What are they doing that was the only, life? It's not your man. Well, that was the it's only reason main. why. why I'll just why I, was in that was the only reason why I wanted to go to Ken was because, you know, to help Wyatt to get Ken back on his feet, you know. And no, that, but I, okay, that's not your main. I have one more question. Uh, did you authorize somebody to contact uh, the Bueller's uh, insurance uh, company to tell them that you had a dispute? Against. Did you know I, that that I happened? I wouldn't do that. Okay. Did you know that that happened? No, I, would, I, I, I mean, I'm not for sure it happened. I was told it happened. No, I, I wouldn't sure. know to even think about doing that. Right. Yeah. right. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Mr. McMillan. 
kind of you had a request that he not do it on a Friday auction. I went back and looked, and he actually did it on a Sunday auction. Were you that happy the, with the Sunday auction? That was the first. And Just yes or no. Were you happy with the Sunday, Sunday auction? That's because I didn't know what was going to happen after the Sunday auction. Yes, I, I mean, I, I had no choice. You know, it was gone. The stuff was gone. Any other questions? Attorneys? No. I mean, he introduced himself last time I was here. The only person mm -hmm. that I know here is you, Beaver. <laughs> So you never met Mr. Barnes before? Never. Never. Does he advise you in any way in regard to this? No. I, I, and you didn't know Ken. I think you said you knew his wife and, and his thought, son. I, yes, I've known Ken. I met him when he was married to to Ken. Never? Yes. You never appreciate that business? Right no. I don't know. Any, any other questions? Okay, any objection to this witness being released? I would like to say You can say you cannot type in. Okay, sure. Can you sure. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. We'll take a five minute recess. Was there a that I could say? No. Uh, I'm going to have it said to five. No.
complaint. Um, and uh, I presented that to Mr. Bueller and I think to his attorney um, in 2010 uh, as far as his ability to come back and, and auction again and get an auction license. There were certain restrictions that were imposed upon him for returning to um, being able to have a license? That's correct. And could you go over those uh, restrictions that he may have? Certainly. Um, specifically, the restrictions on practice were that uh, he could not execute any agreements uh, with sellers and consignors, consignors or with buyers. And he could not receive any money from buyers or pay any consignors. In other words, he could not handle um, any money uh, for any auction. He, at that time, had agreed to work under estate auction services or Henderson auctions, and he would only call auctions. If he had another auction that was not a state auction services or Henderson auctions, he had notified the board in writing of the auction at least 30 days prior to the auction. Um, unless there was some reason he just got hired within that 30 day period, he had, he had to notify the board immediately. He also had to continue to pay on a sales tax judgment, uh, which we provided a copy of it to him, and he out at least $200 per month to clear that and any other sales tax liability in the state, whether reduced to judgment or not. Um, and he had to comply with any further orders of the uh, auction board. And as it relates, what does it mean that, as it relates to dealing with people, what, what, what was the restrictions as you understood? He would not. And what did that mean? I mean, could he, could, it, could he, execute, an, could he ex execute a consignment control no. On behalf of the auction house? According to this, he cannot execute any agreements, period. And that, if a consignment control form is quite often used by auctioneers as an agreement. Uh, sometimes that's the only agreement you ever see. And if you could, what would be the normal mechanism for an individual to place reserves on property? Uh, you could do it in a number of fashions. Consignment control is one. Uh, any contract um, that you would have, you could specify by item or throughout the entire um, auction whether or not there was a reserve. Um, in Louisiana, the, any auction is considered to be without reserve unless otherwise stated. So let me show you which has been marked as exhibit number five and ask whether or not, that is a NCR paper, but do you recall receiving a copy? Yes, I got uh, a copy of it. It's kind of hard to read, but in this particular instance, um, can you tell who, who has signed that document? Um, it shows here, uh, signed by the seller, Ms. Vesova, and Matt Fuel. And there appears to be no listing of items for consignment, is that correct? That's correct. And would that be a, a, an appropriate way to have a listing of items for a okay. And what would be the, let me show you, which has been marked as exhibit, in exhibit number one, which is pages Ask whether or not you recognize this document. It's two pages. Okay. <coughs> um, yes, I do recognize this document. Now that would be uh, the appropriate way for the listing of items, correct? Yeah, well, this is a basic listing. It shows the lot number, the quantity, and the description of the item consigned. This is a handwritten document, as you can see with this, as I understand it's done in multiple colors and copies. Um, so this would be a, a way, I, I've expressed to auctioneers um, that I do not think that this is a very good contract, but it does constitute an agreement since both parties signed, and there are things that are actually put on these documents <coughs> to be specifically uh, part of the agreement. Now, if there was a potential for, even though know, you may not like the document, particularly, you could put, uh, you could place a actual reserve on a particular line, um, or not. Yes, I assume you could. There's no particular location to put a reserve on this. Uh, in more formal documentation, you quite often will see a 
reserve no reserve <coughs> notation somewhere in the document. Does it appear that the seller had signed this particular document? No. And who it indicated had signed this particular document? It appears that a signature appears to be Mr. Matthews. And let me ask uh, any objections to it? I'd like to publish this to the uh, board. <coughs> now, when um, when a complaint is filed, how what's the process and what's the procedure? Normally, when I receive a complaint, I first evaluate to make sure I understand the complaint uh, and that uh, it falls within our jurisdiction. Even if I don't understand it or it may not fall, I would then send a copy to the auctioneer and ask them to respond. Um, if they respond, I put it all together, and then uh, in some cases that response is requested through a, something called a 961, which is a notice of noncompliance. If I need more information, I would simply send them a, a copy of the complaint and ask them to respond to the documentation they think is appropriate. Um, if it appears from both sets of documents that I have enough information, then I may issue the 961 or I may take it to the next board meeting and ask the board to comment on the particular circumstances, not the actual facts for individuals. Um, because we do not have a, anyone who actually reviews things for auction violations other than myself. Now, um did, let me show you which has been marked as exhibit number two. Do you recognize that set of documents? Yes. And um, what does is, what is that, what do those documents represent? This was a response to my original inquiry to a copy of the complaint to the state auction services. And this would be the response that you referred to earlier. That's correct. And there is a written, written letter back to you by Mr. Mac Bueller as well as Kim Bueller, is that correct? That's correct. And some additional attachments of documents. That's correct. Did, um, as a result of reviewing that, did you proceed to the next step, either with an investigation or a formal action? I proceeded uh, in this case because I felt after this uh, return that there was some information here that confirmed uh, Ms. Vassella's uh, contentions. Um, as we, I got more into it, um, I did bring in an investigator to actually take a statement and to see if we could get more information for the transaction. And that would have been Mr. Jim Steele. That's correct. And what, after reading the response uh, by Mr. Bueller, both Mr. Bueller, what were the issues that you were concerned about? Mr. Bueller, Mr. Mac Bueller uh, admitted that there had been some clerical errors, that an item had been misassigned. He referred to 9,000 lot numbers or ghost consigner numbers. Um, there was also an admission with regard to uh, not paying timely uh, because they had lost the item that had been consigned. And there was a contention that uh, an item had been broken and had been what do you mean by uh, 900 series? And make, give some further explanation. As well, a 9,000 in this letter it says that a 9,000 lot number uh, is used if there is no identification of the consignment or something to that effect. That's what I understood from this. Um, as we got further into it, we learned that there are a number of 9,000 lot numbers which may or may not be assigned to those consignments. Um, this uh, basically, I don't know that I can actually explain it to you because I don't know that I understand what a 9,000 lot number really is for. Now I'm not sure I understand what it goes inside of it. Gotcha. Let me ask you, I'm going to show you um, two different things that have been provided to us. Uh, this is exhibit number, number six, which has been introduced. And if you look in the documents, In the response by Mr. Mr. Mac Bueller, there is a listing of items that you can 
can see here. Yes. Um, Ms. Pasula um, provided us a copy of an initial, which is marked as ex in the right hand, is exhibit number six. six, in which the armoire was not initially listed, correct? That's correct. And the, 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 Mr. Buell or either Ms. Buell provide to you a listing that, that showed that the armoire was not off, was not on the list. Yeah, I have another document here that indicates that the armoire number 9,009 was on the list and was paid with a different amount. Now, in reference to uh, those two different documents, she testified earlier that the the item that you have in your right hand, which does not have the arm on, she initially received, um, which would have been on 924 of 2012, along with the check without the arm on. And it appears they at some time later figured out that the arm wall was not listed or not was not listed or was not was in fact sold. Do you agree with that? They, the only other thing I have, and there's a statement in their, in their statement to me about that this is the armoire that they didn't know exists or didn't know it belonged to a specific one of those two things, and that they had to uh, basically uh, redo the situation, and, and that would have been this document. So there was a, the same date on the both documents, correct, is listed? As yes. A, but that would have been the the date of the actual uh, auction, correct? Or do you know? I'm not sure why I don't have the actual day of the auction. It would be sometime that you don't send a time. Now, as a result of, of um, Mr. Steele getting involved, what did you assign him to do? I asked him to talk to, well, first of all, to review the documents to see if he saw anything unusual. Mr. Steele had handled the original uh, hearing with regard to Mr. Bueller and has been reviewing the uh, documents that we've been receiving from Mr. Bueller since he was a bit back to practice. Um, and he did review it um, and uh, also I asked him to speak to Ms. Pusula and take a statement to make sure that we were on the same page as what we were looking for. Were there some other, I were there other issues that were raised other than was it initially in Ms. Pusula's complaint? Yes. What were those issues? First of all, when he spoke with Ms. Pasula, there was some issue with regard to uh, perhaps that some of these items were not sold in an appropriate form and that they may have been sold to friends and may not have received a good right amount of money. At that time, I asked Mr. Steele to talk to the purchasers that we had received a list and to confirm that these were actual you know, third-party sales. Now, at some point, you handed this all off to me, and uh, he was reporting to me at, uh, as reference to his investigation. Is that correct? That's correct. And do you know whether or not Mr. Steele, in fact, interviewed those individuals? Yes. And was there any findings that, based upon what he saw, that any of the items were sold for prices other than what was paid Ms. Pasula? I think he was unable to speak to one uh, buyer, but other than that, uh, he did confirm for the most part. Although the specifics were not available that uh, these have been sold as stated by Mr. Buell and Mr. Buell. Now, as a result of your review of all this information, uh, what actions did you next take? Well, I'm going to set this for you. And in the actual hearing, uh, in the actual hearing, you uh, allege a specific allegation of a violation, correct? I, I actually alleged two. And that was sections four and five. One, efforts to deceive and defraud the public, and five, incompetency or gross negligence. That's correct. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, between losing the name of the consigner, uh, not paying appropriately, um, and uh, breaking things um, and some indication that this is an ongoing problem because I've seen this before from both viewers. Um, I determined that there was an incompetency issue 
Um, I also had an allegation with Ms. Vasilo, which I had no reason not to believe that she felt that she had been deceived. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Mr. Gillespie. Was there, have there ever been any other complaints against the state auction services? Um, not from a third party. The board did have uh, and dealt with one at the beginning of 2012. Uh, there was a sale, and again, uh, Mr. Bueller provides us, or at least she provides us with copies of um, transactions because I would tell him what a subpoena them and might as well go ahead and get them to me because the board charged me with monitoring his activities after the agreement. Um, there was some indication um, in the sale that's called the wrist hotel sale um, that uh, there was sloppiness failure to have contracts and some issues with regard to summer activities, but not keeping track of things very well. Uh, we were concerned and um, I sat down with them at that time rather than going to formal complaint and said, uh, please, you know, get some contracts, keep track of things. We sp I spent an hour with them going over what I would ask them to do. Um, and uh, there was no formal action taken by them. Have there ever been any complaints by any consigners other than Mr. Sewell? Well, I mean, we actually had the one in 2006 against Mr. Kennedy. No, I'm talking about the state auction services. The state auction services, um, nothing I would call them. Any complaints from any buyers of the state auction services? No. So other than the complaint, what, 2006, I think you said? That was with Ken Buehler, though, before I state auction services. That was seven years ago? Yes. Okay. I have direct. Direct. I'm sorry. Direct. Um, did, did you hear me? The original infraction in 2006 with Ken, what, what, what was the basis of that? Uh, and uh, I'll try to make this okay. as concise and as short as I can. Uh, the base Mr. Reviewer had uh, an auction house here in Baton Rouge and had one for some time. Uh, he was dealing in some high-end auctions um, and uh, high-end sales of antiques and other things. Um, he, for whatever reason, um, he pledged third party consigned items um, to a bank as security for a loan. Mm -hmm. um, as the bank, he didn't pay the loan, the bank mm -hmm. foreclosed um, on the loan, and a number of consigners' uh, property was taken as part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there were complaints filed by a number of these consigners. Mm -hmm. um, and we handed those through a proceeding that was held in 2006. Um, you said that you found um, intentional misconduct. Was it just based upon the fact that um, the complainant told you that she felt it was intentional? You're talking about the, you, current, the current complaint. Yes, that was, the, and we were, we were still looking to see if there were any indications of anything other than just gross incompetence. Did you actually find anything that was intentional other than incompetence? Yeah. They all, you did. Yeah. But Not you did find incompetence, the fact that you didn't keep records. And, that's correct. Uh, now, um, I believe the document that I reviewed in exhibit number five was signed by Matt Euler. Is that correct? Uh, which one is that? Thank you. Yes. Did you see any documents at all that was signed by Ken Buehler, in, or do you know of any in your investigation? Uh, let's see. Yes. Um, the consignment control items are signed by Mr. Back, Matt Buehler, although the consigner settlement documents say uh, when you have more items to sell, please call Ken Bueller at 225-247-4980, which indicates that he would be the one to contact if he wanted to have the further transactions. Do you know if he was ever contacted by anyone? Uh, particularly other than the yes, Casillo, no. Um, was that something he was not supposed to do? Can. Can. He cannot execute her. He, can, he cannot. No, so that would have all options. So he actually disobeyed the previous agreement that he entered into with the board. It is five weeks that he was done, so yes. All right. And um, did you ask him about this? Did you talk to him about this in your investigation? 
I sent the formal notice to him and he responded with, I believe this is exhibit number two, in which case um, he refers to we. And I would have to assume that um, uh, he was part of these transactions. Um, because he said we in the document? Yeah. Would you basically ask said, if I, if I could, we have a yeah, go ahead. Stay in the wrong place. Um, uh, this is to verify that Judy facilitated on several cases and has to put reserves and select items. And every time I told her that we only do that on high-end items and that none of the items she can sign um, was qualified. Qualified. Thank you. Um, so he actually admitted that he actually participated in that. Yeah, he said here also, yeah, I explained to her on many occasions that the more her eyes okay. bring, the more we make. So mm -hmm. he was obviously uh, talking to her about the bad guy. And that's something that he, he said he was not supposed to do when the board um, reinstated his That's life. correct. And I had discussed that with him on, on more than one of these occasions. All right, that, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Is there anywhere in the restrictions that were placed on Mr. Bueller that he cannot communicate with a consigner? If the, I'll, I'll call your attention to that. Basically, as I understood, he couldn't execute any uh, agreements, and uh, he was only to call the options for those two particular options. Have you seen any agreement that Mr. Bueller, Ken Bueller, has executed? Uh, off the hand, a written agreement that. Your interpretation, your interpretation of this restriction is that he cannot communicate with a consignment? I believe that any time that there's a transaction leading up to the execution of contract, that if I am holding with this, I believe that he should not be involved in that transaction. So he shouldn't return a phone call from a consignment? I'm not saying that, but he cannot discuss with them specifics of the transaction. Isn't there a distinction between discussing with somebody a transaction and executing a document in connection with that transaction? The execution is obviously one thing in obligation to state auction services, and he cannot do that. Um, the, trans the discussion with regard to what the transaction was going to be as part of the execution in the high interpretation of people. So if he were to respond to a question that would be, is there going to be a minimum bid or can I place a reserve? And he said, no, we don't do that. That would be a violation? That may not be because that's part of the actual call. And I would leave that up to the court. Would you agree with charge. me that that may be a very fuzzy line? <laughs> well, I, I think part of the problem is the only reason we're here is I think that he was doing a lot of the communicate and that's part of it. Any board questions on this? Yes, I'm sorry. I'll yield to you. I apologize. I, um, number two, item number two in the agreement says you will not execute any agreements with sellers or consignors, execute any agreements with consignors or buyers, nor shall you receive any money from buyers or pay any consignors. You will not handle any of the money for any auction for which. You work, you will work under state auction services or Henderson auctions and will call only auctions. Is there any restriction in this provision that he cannot communicate with consignors? In regard to calling auctions, he may communicate. No, no, is there a restriction? Is there any restriction in that document that he is forbidden to communicate, to talk, to explain? to answer questions from consignors. You will only call options, period. That's the way I interpret it. That is his only involvement, or should be his only involvement. But you acknowledge that he should probably return phone calls. Then he can discuss, oh, that's not his here, which he talks to my father, who's in charge of this particular 
would you agree with me that a violation of this agreement is very punitive, would be punitive. It could result in suspension, revocation, loss of his license. That's why the agreement was done. Was to make sure that he abided by the guidelines of this particular agreement. Do you see anything in there that he did not abide by the letter of that agreement as that agreement is specifically written? Obviously, you and I disagree on what's specifically written here. I don't know. But that. <laughs> Any follow up questions from the board? Yes. Yes, and I appreciate what you're doing because that was my exact line of questioning mm -hmm. that I was getting with because I read that in there and, and if he did violate it, if he did violate uh, at number two on, on executing the uh, executing agreements, it would put us into a situation where we would have uh, immediate suspension or potential uh, revocation of the license at that point in time. So I, I, all that's a very gray area. We're talking very close on whichever direction that could be, and that's something we'll probably discuss as, as we get ready to, to, to get to this. That was definitely one of my questions. The other question that I heard, and it's the first time I heard this, but uh, Mr. Bankson said that Ms. Dow recused herself because of something with Robert Burns. I don't, I don't have any information on that. Is, is there something that you no, could, we should know? Probably. We should know if she's recusing herself for a reason, because that could play a part in, in our decision-making process. Well, so be called as a witness. Could be called as a witness. Oh, yeah. He will Thank be called you. as a witness. Okay. What does it mean when it says we'll only call auctions? What is the call an auction? What does that mean? And again, I I refer to the specific details of that to the people who are experts, which is the point. My interpretation is he shows up that day and it's basically a contract document uh, that he would call the auction and hand him the events of that day or you know, acknowledging bids, taking care of descriptions, etc. Uh, that was never part of any allegation or complaint then. So that's how I interpreted it. And that all the activities pre auction day of getting documents signed, communicating, talking about reserves, that has nothing to do with actually calling an auction. That's all. That's all the question. Any other board follow-up? Follow-up. I just, uh, it's, it's a tough situation to miss down on some of this stuff, being an auctioneer. Communication is one of the key things that we do. And to talk about reserves or not talking about reserves would be something that would restrict me as an auctioneer. I think that even if he was calling the auctioneer and he was asked about reserves, he should respond to that. When it comes to written agreements, I think it's very specific in what he may do. But as far as calling an auction and being asked about reserves would be something that would be a lack of communication on that auctioneer if he didn't answer that. If he's asked that, that has to do specifically with the call. And again, that's why I refer those questions to the board. Uh, then I would agree that he's allowed to do that. But if it's anything prior to that day or any kind of transaction with regard to items, then I, it is my position that I understood that the board wanted him not to be in a part of those transactions. And again, they all make the final decision. Mr. I was on that board in that 06 decision. And, uh, I remember it very well. And uh, we agreed for him to keep his license as long as his father was involved in the, his auction business. Or, or Henderson auctioneers, and uh, he was to do nothing but call the auctions. His dad would handle all the money and all the business of the, of the auction itself. That was part of the agreement. Um, are there any other questions for Ms. Dow? Yes, sir. Do you have anything that he signed? That Ms. Kim, you have signed? Mm -hmm. uh, to, and he agreed with that.
Mr. Field, uh, can you give us your name and address? Mr. Bueller, um, you've been here the whole time, so I'll try to speed it up as I can. Exhibit number two, This is, is this the response of the documents that you uh, responded to Ms. Anna Dow concerning the complaint that was filed? Yes, it is. And in reference to the documents that we have here, the first two pages uh, are you, and the third page is, is from your son, correct? And then there were some additional documents. Let me ask you if you can clear up, if, if you can, uh, this document that was marked as exhibit number five. The document that has been provided by the complainant appears to be a uh, item signed by her, but with no listing of items. Is that correct? That is correct. Did, did when you when the items were picked up, is that the normal process for y'all to pick up items without having them? It occasionally happens, but it's not the normal process. <coughs> so when you actually picked it up, there was no specific listing. There was, uh, as you know, I cannot. I, I need to sign the forms, except for something like this. And so uh, the forms were not picked up, and I took that and did the list. So you said your your employees. So in the exhibit number two, there is a listing of documents, uh, which is two pages, and you recognize that. That's what they put them on. Okay. They put them on the wrong on the wrong page. And in reference to that, uh, this was never signed by the complainant. Is that correct? Now. Uh, there was, who would be the individual that would have been communicating with the complainant during this process? Well, uh, no, after, no. Uh, let me ask you, did you know Ms. Masilla? No, 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 yes, I visited with her twice. Uh, she, we communicated by phone and tried to get together because she told me of her unhappiness with her. And so we tried to get together one time she had to cancel, another time I had to cancel, et cetera. And we finally did sit down and discuss things. And, uh, and then she also told me then about the broken table. Uh, as I said in my statement, the boys claimed that it was not broken when they delivered it, but I took Mr. Sewell's word that it was broken and we took it back and fixed it. Now, in reference to uh, this issue about the uh, armoire that was listed in the 9,000 series. Right. Um, can you explain to the board how what transpired and what happened? Yeah. Uh, since they're all auctioneers, I would assume that they occasionally have lot tags that are missing, or even an item, God forbid, does get in without the, having a lot in their room. I practice instead of, we use a, a program called Auction Flex, and, so all of the items, we record them first, and then we go and then we into the auction flex. And when it's entered into the auction flex, if it's a 9,000 number, we don't, rather than stopping the auction at the moment and trying to find out to whom the item belongs, we go ahead and record it as a ghost consign. I have set up in the system one consignment number, or one custom number, that is the one that we need to straighten out. And so it doesn't slow down the auction to keep going. And as soon as the auction is over, I print out the information from the ghost center, and Ken and I go over it, and we straighten those things out. Now, the problem is, in this particular case, we got a, there was a clerical error, and it was assigned to Mars employees as opposed to uh, so. And, and so it was actually sold of the auction on the 16th. And was Mr. Uh, uh, Boris paid for that. He was paid for it, yeah. And when did when did you determine or find out that that was incorrect? It actually was a week or two, honestly, because mm -hmm. the the sequence of events. Ken asked me if Mr. Silver's uh, online had been sold. I looked at her records and saw that no online listed on her records was being sold. So I told him no. So I didn't know that it was an issue for maybe another week. And then we then 
then we did our investigation, which took us another few days to find out that it was in fact so, and Craig and to the four weeks ago. Now, uh, looking at the at the documents that we have, it appears that uh, Two different if one of the flex auction flex prints out the day of the auction, not the day of the auction. And so therefore and I think we printed the uh invoice for the facility for after the immediately after the auction, but I didn't decide on that. When we clearly found that it was supposed to be on her system, we went back and corrected it in the system so it had a permanent record of which items were sold for which consumer. And we corrected it when we printed it out, it still shows the auction date of the system. And the auction date, date I'm sorry, she keep editing. Uh, okay. uh, the auction date was 9 16 of 2012, correct? Right. Right. And it appears that this is a check made payable to Ms. Vasilla uh, dated September the 24th. Correct. Right. And that particular item, uh, the armoire was not included in this initial right. check. Check. Yeah. And do you know approximately when the uh, check was made payable to and Ms. Pasula? It actually was in November, or whatever, 11, 7, or whatever. November the 7th, 2012. And let me ask you, do um, you know how, how you came to have her as a client? Was it something that you were doing or something that Ken was doing or how did that come about? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, she called Ken for some way to do it. And then Ken and I talked about it and he told me to help her with it. And was Ken, as you understand it, communicating with her before the auction? Yes. And you are familiar, I presume, with exhibit number four, which is the agreement entered into by the board as well as with your son, Ken, concerning the requirements for him to maintain his license. What is your understanding of what Ken is allowed to do? My understanding is certainly wasn't that he couldn't communicate with his client. So I had to tell him about it, he's not having it. So, as far as when it says here, you will work under state auction services or hindrance auction and will only call auctions. What do you understand to call an auction means? Well, I guess anything to do the things that they've talked about here, to communicate with the audience, to get them involved. Certainly, since the auction is the one that is actually doing is that more than just on the day of the auction, or would that include the days prior? <coughs> now, um, how would you describe uh, the situation with the uh, up? The other items where they were said that this oil lamp is missing. The uh, lamp, my grandson, this is what we refer to. Uh, both the globe and the globe is in the lamp as it was in the truck. And so we took it over the auction. When I went to visit with her uh, later, uh, uh, we offered to pay her based on the highest price we got for any one uh, in the lamp. So it's a uh, Or I would be able to try to sell it. And that lamp is the one that it changed to. And we sold it for more than we sold <laughs> any other one in the lamp. And it didn't have the boat. And yeah. so therefore I can understand how uh, Carl Richardson would have thought that it was an all reserve because it did not have a boat. It was a gorgeous lamp, but it didn't have a boat. 
So you had reviewed uh, exhibit number three and Mr. Steele's interviews with different people concerning the different <coughs> items that we talked about, correct? Right? And that's what you're referring to, that it, that you, uh, it, it, it was sold for $245. It was sold for $245. It's the most you got to the what is your procedures with uh, the restrictions on the kin? How do y'all deal with situations before an auction? Part of calling an auction is also setting up the person. We had an auction and I set it up, we didn't sell a lot. And so Ken sets up the and to me, that's part of doing the auction itself. And does, um, are you compliant with the requirements that he not handle any of the money and that he not sign any of the contracts? I can take him on direct right now. Uh, yeah, well, why don't you go ahead and then okay. I'll have uh, Mr. Bueller, I'm going to show you documents. I'm going to mark this B1 for Bueller 1 and ask you what this is. <coughs> history of uh, yes, the sir. state officer services. Yes, sir. Would you review that with the board? We open, I was at the the auction business. We opened the auction business on March the 27th was our first auction in 2011. Since then, we uh, started in a small building in, on Florida Land Court. Uh, it was not terribly successful at it. Started doing some auctions of at estates when the parents died and the kids <coughs> took the house and we would go in and sell everything for them, including the house in public cases. And then uh, we moved to a building in Prairieville, a much larger building, and uh, we conducted, since we started, 41 auctions. So in the last two years, exactly, almost exactly, we conducted 41 auctions. We have about a little over 210 consigners. And the moat, I did check, and at least one of those consignments has done 22 different consignments. You know, so they keep coming back, and lots of them have done 10 or 15 times that they've consigned items for them. Uh, that largest number, by the way, is Jenny Sanders, who works for the state but also has a little booth, and she brings some lots of things to us. Uh, we have uh, 2,235 2, people that have either attended one of our auctions are asked to be put on our email list. We've actually sold items to 995 uh, people. We have sold more than 23,000 items over the last two years. Uh, a lot of those are obviously very inexpensive items, lots, lots of, of various kinds. And then we've had one component uh, from two to sold. Mr. B, I'm going to show you what I've marked as Exhibit 2 and ask you if this is the original of the consignment control document executed by Judy Casilla. Uh, it is. And would you tell me what's attached to that? Is, is it signed by Judy Casilla? It is signed by Judy Does it also state clearly above that that all sales are to the highest bidder? It does. When is the list of items actually put on the, the, the form? Sometimes it, it varies. Sometimes it's done on site. Sometimes it's, it's done back in the shop. And if it's a very, very large consignment like the Borders Estate or something like that, we get them to sign a consignment form for all of the items. We enter them into the system, put lock numbers on them, and give them a printout to check all of the items that are listed. Because there's absolutely no we might, we might have, uh, we had more than 2,000 items in one consignment. 
So we're not going to sit there and fill this list out for 2,000 items. Now you mentioned the Voorhees auction. Is that the auction that took place in September 16th, 2014? It is the auction, and uh, I think this is her uh, recollection of dates a little off there. She said that the contact was in August. It was just before the September 16th date. It was during that week. I think it was probably on the third of that. I can't absolutely be sure. I'm sorry no date was put on that. But uh, it was during that week that it became, because we didn't even have this opportunity to get any of her items onto the website to promote it. But we were trying like heck to get her items so when we had a big anti auction so we could then put it on there. I'll show you what a mark is. It said it's B3 and ask you if you could identify that. And this is from the website that shows the auction that is coming up. And it shows all of the pictures and so forth that we yeah. have. And put it in there, and uh, none of Ms. Silva's were in there because they came to the house so late. We didn't get it on the place. Now, had Ms. Silva made a consignment sooner, <coughs> been a likelihood that she would have been or had pictures in, on the website. Yes. And you normally produce a website before every auction. Yes. I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as B4 and ask you if you can identify this for me. Uh, yes. This is the new page that you saw for the unlock. So this is the one, this is the document after we discovered the error, the clerical error that we made, and we corrected it and sent her this, and sent her a check for the difference between this amount and the amount she received. So as I understand it, the sale took place on September the 16th of 2012. The item was erroneously attributed to someone else who was paid for that item. That was discovered, the money was returned, and then remitted to Ms. Vasula on November 7th. Is that correct? Correct. And that would still be within the 60-day statutory period. Would that be correct? Correct. Even though it was a misplaced item. Correct. I'll show you what I've marked as exhibit. And ask you, B5, ask you if you could identify that. Uh, yes, yeah, so the mm -hmm. boys took all the items back to Mr. Silver. Let's show you what I've marked as B6. And ask you if you could identify huh? that. Uh, yes, yeah, so she, she received the uh, uh, library table that we put in. Now, there was some testimony about from Ms. Basula concerning her telling you not to sell any more of her items. Do you recall that? I never had such a conversation with her uh, that I can recall. If, if I, if I do not recall ever having such a conversation with her. I'm going to show you what I've marked as B7 and ask if you can identify that. Consignment, and she consigned it the best we can determine because I do not have a date. It was the week of prior to the United States, so it's probably 1914. And the auction was on the 16th. And then we sold her items, uh, sold her <coughs> items on, on the 16th, and then continued to sell some of her others uh, for her and send her checks on each of those dates. Let me show you what I've marked as B8 and ask you if you can identify that. Uh, these are the buyers of uh, items from the September 16th auction. Buyers of items that are on the list. And other dates for Ms. Vasula's items? Yes. Does that account for all her items, including those that were broken yes. land? The table was broken that you repaired and the other item returned. Show you what I've marked as B9 and ask if you could identify this, please. More particularly, if you would turn over to the last page, well, go ahead and tell me what the B9 is. Uh, we had to send a cashier's check to the police because they couldn't get more ship cash. So we got a bit of a top time bump and we had to kind of pick it up the cash to uh, So this is the check that was able to pay to the uh, police. 
So the paper trail of the money shows that the sale was 16th. We remitted the documentation to Mr. Boring on the 24th, later determined that that was erroneous, returned money, and then paid Ms. Fasola. I have two other exhibits. Um, individual or affidavits of two individuals who are not here to testify. One is Reginald Sterling who did pick up uh, the consignment items. And B11, which would be the affidavit of Wyatt Bueller, who was involved in the picking up of the consignment items. We offer, you now, Mr. Bueller, yeah, we're going to offer all our exhibits. Uh, I don't make sure I don't forget it. Um, clearly, communication is a big issue with somebody that wants to sell their property. And I've heard the testimony, Mr. Allen. We've heard your testimony. We've heard the testimony, Mr. Sir. <coughs> In response to further clarifying, with consigners, what they can expect and what you're going to do. Have you taken corrective measures to very clearly clarify for them what you will be doing and what they can expect? Uh, and I'll show you what I've marked as B12 and ask you if that is it. And if you would, review that with the board, please. <coughs> We have put together a new consignment form to make it very clear uh, what is going to happen. I can go over each of the individual items that you like. It states our purpose is to determine is to get the highest price possible that we can for them. Uh, and if they have reserved, we will not sell it below that price except that if we choose to sell it slightly below the price so that their net is the same, then that would be okay. And you know, that, it's, that there is no reserve otherwise. We must agree to on this document. That's basically it. Do you go over all the items with the consigner when they consign you? Yeah, uh, Have you recently conducted an auction for Dr. John McHugh Smith? Yes, we did. What was involved with that auction? Uh, his parents, one, his father died, his mother was going to go to the place up in Zappa. And uh, lots of stuff they were doing and everything to do with, so they called us about it. Did he send you, um, for lack of a better way to characterize an unsolicited testimony? He absolutely did. Sure, we'll have to be the first and ask you if you can identify that. This is what it says. Now, during this entire transaction, or any transaction, since this agreement was entered into by Ken, the restricted agreement, has he executed any documents for consignments or any other documents with the state auction services? No. Has he handled any money whatsoever with the state auction no. services? How is the money dispersed to consigners from the state auction services? Uh, no, I handled the trip for it. I handled the document from the other. Ken is not even a signatory party on the trip because he's not a signatory party. Well, we're, not, we're not challenging his reputation. I'm, I'm well, I figured I could. Okay. I'm getting ready. <laughs> I don't object to this. Okay. I know, we're not challenging his reputation. I know, I just. Uh, the question is of what he did, if it was an error or wrong. That's the only thing that's. Uh, I'll withdraw the offering. Okay. All right. Nobody is challenging We him. offer file and interviews. As far as, as far as we know, he's an honest man. He's, he's trying to offer him right now. He's so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll offer file and yeah. reduce the evidence uh, 1 through 12. I'll withdraw 13. Okay. And I'm. I will enter and oppose an objection to items B 
10 and B11, the affidavits. I have no way to cross examine those individuals, and I don't think that's. Are you Chenry now? Are yes, we're Chenry, the, the as administrative officer. Okay, can, can I take him now? Let me see if we have any redirect okay. or redirect slash. Okay. I mean, since you, had a, since you took them on direct, I guess you have an opportunity for cross, even though you also had a direct examination. Do you, any, do you want to let the board go first and then y'all can follow the, up? I just want to address this objection to the affidavits. Yeah. I think as the hearing officer knows, affidavits are fully admissible. Well, you can proffer them, counsel. I mean, I don't, I don't yeah, his I'm reputation saying. is not an issue here. Well, though, this is, these, this these, is are, these are affidavits as to what was told to Mr. Sula and. Ron, well, understand. Yeah. yeah. But the so other thing we be introducing that evidence, the objections right. noted on the record. Are there any questions for this witness from the board? I, I have some questions. Um, Mr. Newell, how long have you been licensed as an auctioneer? I know your business started in 2011, but when did you actually receive your license? I'm not a licensed auctioneer. So you're, you're so you're actually only operating a business that's like correct. Is that correct? And um, you know why Mrs. Pasulo um, did not sign the cons consignment contract that was only signed by you? Uh, no, only thing I can imagine is that they, they made two trips out to get the items and they Got, got the wrong one. Uh, she got she signed the blank one instead of the one. That's the only expression. And and does the document and I'm referring to the consignment contract, does that place any any reserve on any items that are listed there? Because I didn't see it if it did. No, it did and um, as a business owner you do admit today to the board that that you are guilty of sloppy record keeping. Do you admit that? Yes. Thank you, sir. That's all the question. Any other questions for the board members? Ms. Pasula did sign. Yes, I said she's, right, uh, right. Yes, sir. But that was after the fact, I think. Mr. Newell, you said your wife handled your checkbook. Yeah. Yeah. What you said about the fact. That is, I mean, my wife. Do you have an escrow account? We have an escrow account. Are those checks cut to this lady that's filed this complaint, Ms. So, so, uh, was she paid with escrow checks? Yes, she was. Okay. Yes, sir. Did she ever indicate, Ms. Fazola ever indicate to you uh, how much more she wanted for those items? She, uh, she never said, she told me that the old one was worth 2000 or something. And that's the only item in question on the that, That's the only thing she ever told me. And she, and it brought 400 and some dollars. And she thought it should have bought 2000 correct? No that's, a, that's the only price that she right. had told me. Mr. Buter, does your auction company track antiques and such at your auction? In case the outside public has questions about what your merchandise bring for primitives and antiques? Are you able to answer those questions? Do you indicate way? whether an item is an antique or is not an antique? Well, I mean, it's it's usually pretty much somebody tells you they got an antique, they got an antique. In other words, are you asking does he have an in-house appraisal? Yeah. That's what you're asking? Do you have somebody in-house with knowledge of this? Do I have anyone in-house, the only person in-house that has that knowledge is good? Yeah. Now, um, have you ever solicited the services of a, of a GPPA appraiser to appraise anything, whether it comes to the state, an individual, or what? No, I do Do you ever run reserves at your auction? There have been very few items, probably five or ten in the two years we've been in business that we've approved service on. And most of those have been got through also ATF licenses. And so those are mostly in guns. And a car to do it. Okay, any other board member questions? Any other attorney questions? Yes. Um, Mr. Peeler, you're aware that the statute says that every auctioneer shall pay the consigner within 30 days from the receipt of the funds or within 60 days from the date of the sale of the auction, whichever is less. Correct. And so that didn't happen in this particular case. It did not happen in this case. I mean, there, 
to me, that's a lot of respect to me, because we didn't know we owed the money for several weeks. Uh, and we discovered that it had been, we were taking on first. Yes, sir. Now, this is exhibit number five by the board, and this is exhibit number two. Uh, and I just call your attention to those. You see those two documents? Yeah. It appears that the document uh, number five of our exhibits does not have the language of C attached list written in on what she received at her home. Is that correct? Yeah, that is true. So sometime after the fact, someone wrote on this particular document, which, oops, oops. Oh, What's that? Pull that is towards it, you just a second. Yeah, I can't hear it. It's recording. It's fine. Okay. Uh, so it appears that sometime after she received this document here at some other time, someone wrote see attached list. Is that correct? It could be. I, I don't you don't know for sure. Know. Whose handwriting that is? Do you know? Not me. You know if that's Kim's? Maybe so. Probably so. Okay. Um, in connection with the witness's testimony, I'd like to publish these two items to the board. <clears throat> That's all the questions I have. Mr. Brantley has any other questions for you? Uh, Mr. Brantley, any other questions? May or may not call Ken. I need another recess. Okay. We'll take another five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Mr. Bueller, could you give us your name and address? Kenneth Bueller, 1701 Lot Hill, number 48, Adams, we have 7806. And you've been present for all of the testimony of individual witnesses? Yes, sir. So let me ask you to call your attention to exhibit number four. Um, is that the agreement between the board and yourself? Yes, sir. And let's get to the issue of what you see as what you understood or what you thought your restrictions were. Well, among other things, it clearly says that I cannot execute contracts you know, and I cannot handle the money, which I do neither. I've never done either since I've been licensed in this state. And do you believe that any of your activities of being in contact with in this particular component would be something outside the, the area in which would be called in the box. You know, sir, every, everything I do, when, when the board gave my license back, sir, they knew that my father, and he was kind enough, and I hate that he's here because in six or some years of business, this is the first time his uh, ethics have ever been challenged or questioned. So I'm, I apologize that. But uh, no, sir, I don't do anything with outside, outside of the uh, so to the extent that you, what, what you think is that you've been in compliance with your uh, requirements on the group as we have and and so let's talk just briefly. How did you come into contact with uh, the compliance? Uh, Ms. Fasula called me, and I don't remember the dates, but she called uh, one day because my phone number is posted because my father has no knowledge of antiques, so therefore he would call me to discuss it and so forth. She called me and I did know her, my previous ex-wife, who most of you have the pleasure of meeting, is, is uh, they were friends at one point in time and this facility was incorrect. She had actually been to my home at one point in time years ago. And, uh, but anyway, she called me and she said she was in a bind. She really needs to sell some antiques, you know, and she heard I was back and got help her out. So I went to her house and but you signed no agreements with her? No, sir. And were, were you there and present when she signed this blank? Yes, sir. Consignment? Yes, sir. Well, this which is exhibit number five? Yes, sir. And let me ask you, <coughs> there is an exhibit that you have introduced, which is, what's your exhibit number on that? Number two? Two? That it says C attached. <coughs> is that your handwriting? Yes, sir. That is my handwriting. And that's quite standard. You can explain the policy. Oftentimes, when there's multiple items that an estate will be picking up, 
to get them back, we get the consignor to sign the contract, say, yes, I agree to these terms and conditions of solid for the highest bidder. And then we get back to the building, we unload those items, roll them up, and then we list all those items and we do an attached list. So at that point in time, we would go back on there and I wrote see attached list. And my wife is the one, or my father, that actually enters the items in the inventory. That's not something, a standard procedure that you give to someone before it leaves their home. No, on their look where well she got she got a copy of the signed contract but she didn't get a she got the listing we didn't pick up that day let me try to explain that to you. we did not pick up merchandise that day so when my nephew and reginald sterling and my son black we went back to pick up merchandise they did at that time give her a copy of the merchandise she indicates that you heard her testimony today that she never received that copy which is listed with pages one and two. Well, I will say this to you, that we received those copies from the Louisiana Auctioneer's Licensing Board as part of the complaint, so I'm quite confident she did receive those. Okay. Those particular items were attached in her complaint? Is that your testimony? No, my, no, it's not my testimony. My testimony is that we received those copies that showed items listed from Ms. Anna Dow from the Louisiana Auctioneer's Licensing Board as part of the complaint for us to respond to. So she did receive those copies. I have a copy of the actual complaint, which is exhibit number one, which has uh, this, what I call the blank right. consignment form. Right. does not show any listing of it. And then exhibit number two, which has been marked as identification and identified by Ms. Dow as what she received from your office. Right. Is that not correct? That is correct, but what I'm saying is also correct. You're, you're, you're getting around what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Ms. Dow sent us a bunch of paperwork to respond to. And in the paperwork that Ms. Dow sent us were copies of Ms. Fasula's items listed. Let me show you this is exhibit number one. Yeah. Is that not the what you, was sent to you by Ms. Dow? This is part of what was sent to us by Ms. Dow. So what you're saying is more than that? Absolutely. A lot more. Uh, would you um, agree with your father's assessment that there was some sloppy bookkeeping? I don't consider no, no, sir. I don't consider it sloppy bookkeeping. I mean, we've handled 24,000 items in the last two years, and every item is important to every customer. It's important to us as well. But we do our best to ensure that everybody gets paid in a timely fashion for their items. It is an unfortunate incident that does occur, and anybody that's ever been in the auction business will tell you it's going to happen. You know, the minute we recognized the problem, we addressed it, handled it, sent Ms. Fasula our money. We actually paid her before we even received our money back from Mr. Morris for the item that we paid for. You will agree that, that that was not consistent with the statutory requirements? No, sir, I will not agree because statutory requirements say 60 days, and once, and depends on when you start the 60 days. It says 30 days or 60 days, the lesser of the two. Does it not? You know, I don't know for a fact. All right. Um, in reference to the um, would you agree uh, that the I apologize. Um, that the auction took place on September 16, 2012 and she did not receive payment for the home wall until November 7, 2000. Yes, sir. That's all the questions I have. Uh, Mr. Buehler, have you ever been advised that under paragraph true two of the restrictions that you're under, don't handle money, don't sign contracts, call auctions, that you are not to have communications or to communicate with consignors? No, sir. No. And quite frankly, I think that's unrealistic. I couldn't operate without communicating. Now, again, apparently the statutory provision for payment of funds to a consigner is within 30 days of the auction. The outside 60 or the lesser of the two, which would be obviously 30. And I would assume 
that that is under normal circumstances. In this situation, there was a mistake that was made. Is that correct? Yes, sir. There was, was that mistake corrected? Yes, sir, it was corrected. As soon as it was corrected, did you remit money to Ms. Masol? Yes, sir, we did. Did you remit that money before you, in fact, had received return of your funds? Yes, sir, we did. I have some questions. Can you redirect? Uh, just in the sense that your contractual agreement is has a lesser time frame than right now. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yes, sir. It's, well, we try to adhere to that. Ten, ten yes. days from the day of the sale. So, yes. I have some questions. Because I understand you, you and your family knew Mrs. Pasulo before the auction. Yes, she sir. actually knew your <coughs> wife, is it? And also you. My ex-wife. Your ex-wife. Yes, and she contacted you. You didn't make the contact with her, but she contacted you because she knew you were back. Yes, she knew you were a good auctioneer, and, and she had some stuff that wanted to be auctioned. Yes, ma'am. You never initiated the contact. No, ma'am. And she called you, having known her in the past, you accepted the telephone call and you all off. Yes, ma'am. Now, this agreement that you have with the board, was following an, what I consider to be a very egregious complaint for which you pled guilty or were found guilty. You, you agree with that, right? And when I, that agreement was agreed to by you and or your attorney, was it explained to you that you were not supposed to have any contact with anybody, only cry options? And to me, when I cry an option, that means getting up on the floor and actually calling an option. That's how I interpret crying an option. Was that ever explained to you? No, ma'am, not in my... And uh, do you regularly talk to to clients? Yes, um, you you do when they when they call about uh, you know what they are, what they need to do, etc. Yes, ma'am. I've been selling antiques for over thirty years, and I'm pretty familiar with. And you have a, a specific and knowledge on the antiques. I've so. been declared an expert in numerous courts throughout the state. Yes. I've done appraisals for insurance companies all across right. the state. So, so yes, people yes. ask your opinions on certain things. Yes, they, well, Mrs. Pasulo sought you out because of your expertise. Yes, ma'am. That's all the question. Mr. Sims? Mr. Yes, sir. I won't consign something to a sale. I take it that y'all go and pick up merchandise, is that correct? Mm -hmm. You bring it back, then you tag it, is that correct? Yes, sir. Unless it's just one or two items and then it's able to do it there. Miss Fasula's home was very challenging to work in. She is I don't want to get to her personal habits. Mm -hmm. so. Now, when you tag antique furniture, how do you tag? We use uh, tags that we buy from Missouri Auction School or Key for Auction Supply from Excuse me, one second, please. We use self-adhesive sticking labels or wire tags, depending on the particular item. And what that's correct. Yes. I see in this list of things, items that you picked up, the three items on the consignment sheet that wound up in the 9,000 series. Yes, sir. I've been an auction here for 38 years. Okay? Yes, sir. <coughs> I can understand maybe one item per consignment, but three. Yes, we bear in mind, sir, and I'm asking you to keep this in your mind, that when when she called us, she was rushing because she needed money now. We had this big estate sale that was already set up over a thousand items, in. and we were trying to hurry up and get her merchandise in this good sale to help her. You know, like I explained to Mr. Sewell a million times, we work on a commission basis. The more brings, the more we make. You know, we like to make money. We're going to try to do our best to make you money. In your years of experience, you said you've been declared in this court by other stores. Yes, sir. In your opinion, particularly two items, the Omaha? Yes, sir. What state of condition would you say that piece of furniture was in? It was in decent condition. Decent? It yes, sir. Good? Good. Fair, fair to good. Fair to good. Not excellent. If you appraised that piece of furniture, Prior to the auction, what would you appraise for that? In today's market, probably eight hundred fifty dollars. The gone with the wind lamp. Now I know that's you get into oil lamps. That's more or less primitive now. Right. Um, it's 
explain to me what a gone with the wind lamp is. Uh, gone, gone with the wind lamp is a nomenclature that probably should have never been invented because the lamp, they saw it in the movie, Gone with the Wind. And this was not, this was an all burning lamp, okay, with a small modulus face. And then it had a clear glow chimney on it, and it had a hand painted shade to match the base. The hand painted shade is what actually got I, I want to make sure I have to Yes, sir. Your primitives are okay. Yes, sir. Are you done, Mr. Sims? Yes. Okay. I'll yield. Mr. When they had the ruling against him, did that have any kind of time frame on it? Was it a five year ruling, a three year ruling, or was it indefinite? Actually, it was indefinite. It was open, open ended. Mm -hmm. Seems like, well, that's well, at that yeah. time we were pretty well willing to do everything other than sacrifice his first right. child. Yeah. <laughs> so it had, we were we knew at some time in the future we would come back to the board and ask all the restrictions to be lifted. But obviously, he would be compliant. Mm -hmm. We feel like he is compliant. It has been compliant. Um, that was my question. Thank you. Any other board questions? Any other attorney questions? Okay, thank you. Step thank down. You. Thank you. Robert Burns. Robert Burns. Did you get Mr. Burns? Off? He's left, eh? He's not he, here. He's not here. He left. He left. He was under subpoena. I don't think he had a subpoena. Oh, you did? Well, you have to take that up with him. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I'd like to call Mr. Buell back. I just want to get this on the show. I want to get it back. On. I want to get it back. On. I want to get this on. Uh, Mr. Ms. Hunter? Yes. For clarification, what does it mean when a witness leaves when he's under subpoena? I have no idea. Well, he's failed to comply with the subpoena. I think under the administrative procedure, I think you have to have the 19th JDC enforce that. So there's nothing we can do today. If, that, if it prejudices your case, Significantly, then that's another issue. Um, I think, with, with regard to the board, anyway, as far, far as I'm concerned, I, mean, I think we have enough to adjudicate this map today rather than holding it open for the litigants. I don't think things yeah, are the litigants. I, I would ask that we not hold it open, but I would ask that the uh, board give us authority to seek whatever authority we I, can. I, I would still move. Is there a second on that motion? Move. Any, any discussion? Uh, is there any way you can tell us what questions you were going to ask? Uh, they have been with him contacted by the company. Uh, I will raise these with Mr. Buell because he may have knowledge okay. about that. Okay. Is there any, was, any discussion was that on Mr. Mack? Mr. Mack has knowledge. Is there any discussion focus? on the motion to no, 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 have, no, 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 to no, no, allow no. Mr. Bankson to seek remedies for his going? No, we all moved that he should do that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Anyone got authority? Um, is it is it Mr. Is it Mr. Mack? Right. You can stay right there. Okay. Right. Speak up loud. Speak up. All right. All right. Walk over here. <laughs> yeah. so, um, Mr. Bueller, um, as a result of uh, this complaint being filed, were you ever contacted by your bonding agency for your business? I was. Speak up loud. I was. Tim Holt called me one day and asked if this file, the complaint had been filed, and asked me for the circumstances. And in the middle of the discussion, I said, so, so the auction board is notified about this. He says, no, I got a call from Robert Burns to inquire about it. And so that was basically the end of the discussion. He this told me Robert Burns called and asked about this. And as a result of that, they had to cancel the bond. Since we couldn't have the hearing the last time, they agreed to extend the bond to, until the hearing was over. So th there was. Um as a result of the telephone call from Mr. Burns, there was a action being taken to suspend your bond or cancel your bond before before the hearing? Correct. So they said they would hold it until after the hearing. They, they gave me like a 30 days notice or something like that. So that it would be in effect until after the hearing and they got the results of the hearing. And that was the previous hearing that we, that had, to the previous hearing that we had to cancel? Correct. And did have you ever spoken to Mr. Burns before? Uh, I spoke to him by phone some time ago because my wife and I were thinking about starting the business for Ken, and this was a long time, several years ago, and I spoke to him about selling houses at auction, yes. Did he, he ever indicate, do you speak to him about this issue about cancellation of bond? 
I said something to him at the last meeting, and his statement to me was that he had called his bonded agent, not my bonded agent. Okay. But the my understanding, Mr. Holt, that the name and the individual who identified himself on the telephone call was Robert Burns. It was Robert Burns, and the phone call is listed to Robert Burns, so I can sell fast. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brayley, you have any questions? Okay. Uh, let me ask you, uh, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let me show you this. Um, let me ask you if, if Mr. Uh, Bueller has seen this document. Have you seen that? Uh, yes. Do you show it to Okay. What, what does that mean? Like? <coughs> It relates uh, exactly what I just related about the, the call from uh, Robert Burns to Tim Holt. It says it, Tim Holt apparently is a very efficient, effective guy. He takes good notes after every phone call. And so this is exact, almost, I mean, I'm sure it's verbatim, but as I remember it, it is verbatim. He says, immediately after the call, I entered the following comment on Bond, and it's our Bond number. 2813, Tim took a call from Robert Burns, 225-201-0390, former LA board member seeking sure to company info where customer claiming they were defrauded by this auctioneer. Sale state disciplinary hearing on uh, with state on 3513. And he has he's he indicated here he had no way to confirm the identity other than his verbal induction, but I checked the phone number and it is listed auction sales so, staff. I asked, by the way, I asked uh, uh, Tim Holt if, if he had gotten a, a notice from the board, which I assumed he had, but he had not gotten a notice from the board. Okay. It was strictly because of the call from Robert Brown. Thank you, Mr. Um, you know, that's all the questions I have. You need any redirect, Mr. Brantley? Any board member questions? Okay. We rest. We rest. All right. Would you two like to make a closing statement? No. I just, I would like to say a couple of things, and I'll be just brief, 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 brief. What a state auction services has been charged with requires a couple of findings by the board. One, that the efforts were to deceive or defraud, which I think we clearly dispute, disproved, and incompetency of gross negligence, gross negligence I think is out, Incompetency, there were some mistakes made. There, there's clearly mistakes made, there's no question. Now, does that order on incompetency? I don't believe so. I honestly don't believe so. Now, the bigger issue to me is the interpretation of paragraph two of that agreement that we have, the restrictions that we have with the board. I cannot honestly fathom and it clearly is not stated in there that he cannot have communication with the customer or consignments. And I think as the board is aware, being auctioneers, it's, that would be an impossible burden for someone to have. And going over and above that, the law requires that if an administrative agency is to interpret a regulation or a restriction in a particular manner, they have to give the person that is complying with that regulation clear knowledge that any action they take will be in violation of that interpretation. And it's clearly an interpretation because that document, which has to be constri strictly construed, doesn't say that he can't communicate. And I, did, I can't in my wildest imagination believe that was the intent of this board, that he could not talk to or explain or respond to telephone calls or other attempted communications. Um, again, you know, I could write a memorandum on it, I have for other agencies, that if you want somebody to comply with an interpretation, you gotta tell them what that interpretation is. It's gotta be abundantly clear. And it certainly wasn't clear here. And I, I don't think the board should even consider placing that type of interpretation on that restriction, because think about it from your own standpoint. How do you not communicate with a consigner or with a customer? That's all I have.
Mr. Bankston, you're entitled to have the final word if you would like it. I will be very extremely brief. I think there's no question that there was some violate there was a violation because of uh, the issue of not keeping straight of everything. Uh, what's the appropriate penalty? I think there is a penalty that needs to be imposed, but that's certainly the discretion of this board. But I think if the board desires to have the agreement um, modified with Mr. Bueller, then that issue needs to be determined going forward if the board wants to make that communication that aspect clarified. But I think there's no question there was a violation. I don't think it was an intentional violation. I don't think there was an intentional fraud, but there was some violations, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. All right, is there a motion? I'd like to motion, make a motion we go into executive session. Second. Is there any discussion or opposition? All right. On the record? Yes. All right, is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. All right, we're back on the record. All the board members are here. The uh, board's council and the respondent's council are both here. Yes, sir. I would like uh, the record to reflect that before we went into executive session, there was no request made by the respondent or his attorney to have these deliberations be open. Uh, is there any discussion from the board or would anyone like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Make a motion we find the state auctions on two counts for $500 each bookkeeping and late payment. Okay, so it'd be a total of $1,000. Is there a second on that motion? Second. And second, is there any discussion? Um, I will not go along with the particular motion. I do agree that a state um, option services should be fined $1,000, but I also agree that Ken Bueller should be fined $500 because I think he actually participated in the auction more than he was supposed to according to the previous agreement that he entered into with the board in 2010. And I think that because of that, there should be um, restrictions on him and this should serve, a $500 fine would serve as a deterrent from him doing that until such time as this board and he clarified what he can do and what he can't do. And I'm also gonna ask uh, this tribunal to ask Ms. Dow uh, to place on um, the agenda for the next board meeting um, the fact that we will discuss um, what he can do and can't do part of the restrictions. Okay. I don't know, normally when you get for legal work, do you require a motion for that or does she have a standard contract where she can just do what she wants? Cause we, I don't know if that needs to be made in the form she of a motion. She has a contract. She has a contract, I believe. Okay. 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 I, I would put that in the form of a motion after this vote. I'll, okay. I'll look for that. I'll see for that. Uh, and sometimes, I guess, as board members, we agree to disagree. I think that the gray area efforts that we had in, in the uh, ruling on uh, Mr. Bueller left it with some uh, opportunity. We need to do a better job as a board that we make sure we're very clear in what we're sanctioning him on in that ruling. So at that time, that's why I felt that finding the company on the bookkeeping and the late payment was something I felt we definitely needed to do. But in finding him on, uh, on the other ruling itself, I didn't feel like this time until we get that straightened out. I hope very genuinely that we never have this kind of problems again with Mr. Bueller. I hope he understands the seriousness of this offense and what we're doing. And I hope the company, uh, I've seen them already make strides forward in their bookkeeping efforts and their late payment efforts. But uh, we, we want to see these guys really not before this board at any point in time again. Is there any other special um, motion? Well, actually, Ms. Buell was before the board uh, for failure to pay a sales tax um, previously, so he already has violated the agreement in some respect. And for that reason, a $500 fine would serve as a deterrent. I think in putting him on the right path towards conforming what we need him to do as a licensed Louisiana auctioneer. All right, any other discussion? All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, let's take a vote. Y'all want to do a roll call? Roll call vote. All right. Um, Mr. Sims? Yes. Mr. McMillan? Yes. Ms. Jacobs? Uh, yes, for the reasons that I have stated. In other words, I'm for a $500 fine for Ken Bueller. The and but the motion and is for, so the motion. you're voting no, the motion is $4,000 against the company and nothing against Mr. Bueller? No, I'm against that. So you're voting no, Mr. Yeah. Brewster? Yes. Yeah. 
Mr. Bordelon? Yes. All right, motion carries four to one. Um, I'd like to make the motion that we get Anna Dow, our attorney, to look at the agreement or the ruling with Mr. Bueller, and uh, we go over that so we clarify to make sure we have no gray areas on that agreement. I second that. Okay, so she'll have something to present to you at your May meeting uh, for your approval to clarify the terms of the agreement so it's very clear going forward, which you can and can't do. We have motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. All right, I will personally contact Ms. Dow and let her know about that, and she can contact one of y'all with questions. Is there any other business in this matter? All right, hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.